Hello, very good morning to you. Happy Easter Sunday. I hope you're going to have a wonderful day today and thank you for joining us here on Sewing Street. My name is Debbie Shaw and it's eight o'clock in the morning so we've got an early bird special for you. So this is a reduced price item that we bring you for as long as we have the stock and this is an item that you are going to use so often. I would order extra, I would order extra refills certainly um, because this is the Sew Line Fabric Glue Pen. Now these pens, oh gosh, it's like, uh, it's like pins in a stick. So instead of pinning applique, instead of pinning zips in place, you can just put a little slither of glue along your fabric, hold your zip in place, hold your applique in place, perfect for English paper piecing. Um, it dries clear, although the refills do come in different colours. So if you really, if you want the glue to stand out, then you've got colours that will stand out against any colour of fabric. Um, but it dries clear, so you don't have to wash it out. But if you do kind of over glue slightly, it is, as you can see there, water soluble. So you can just, not even put the whatever it is you're making in the washing machine you can just pat it away with a damp cloth so the actual pen comes to you with one refill already and the extra pack you're getting six refills in different colors both included in your £10.98 that is great value that's going to save you a couple of pounds this is while we have the stock now yesterday's um, early bird sold out in about 20 minutes and they're supposed to last all day we like to think that we've got enough for everybody um, but we didn't so hopefully things are going to be different here um, multi-order these if you like it's not um, one per customer you can order as many as you want to as many as you need to but do stock up at them on them while we have this low price of £10.98. Let's take a look at the actual pen and how we're going to use it then. So you're getting quite a lot in here already. Let's have a look at the paper piecing pieces. Do you know, when I, when I first um, started quilting, which was many, many moons ago, I'm going back about 20 years now, um, I like to do a course. If I'm going to learn something, I like to do a course and learn how to do it properly and professionally. And we had to cut out our brown paper pieces after measuring every one of those blooming hexagons. Actually, they weren't hexagons, it was um, tumbling block diamonds I was doing. Um, and then sew all of the fabric pieces around the templates. And I can remember saying to the tutor, can't you just glue them? <gasps> I was nearly thrown out. She was mortified. That is not the traditional way of doing things. Um, nowadays, it is because back in those days, there was only print sticks, which aren't really suitable for fabric. But nowadays, these pens have been designed and created for fabric. So I think this is what most people use these days. Um, Sally Ann's going to be coming up in the next hour with the rest of the kit that I've got here. You can, you can see the, cushion, the finished cushions either side. And she uses one of these as well. So what I like to do is to pop a little bit of glue right in the centre just to hold that in place. Pop that down on the back of my fabric piece. Then I like to put glue onto the fabric, not onto the paper, purely because the, uh, the fabric is coarser, so therefore it's going to take more glue. And fold it down. And then I put a dot in the corner, fold it down. Dot in the corner, fold it down. Dot in the corner, you get the idea now. Fold it down dot in two corners and fold it down and you're tacked, basted, done in seconds instead of sewing. Now when it comes to taking these pieces out, if you are using them for EPP, um, they can be a little bit tricky, particularly if the glue's been there for a while and it's dried, but if you put a warm iron over the back, it melts the glue slightly so you can then pull the paper pieces back out again. So that's such an easy, that's the chore for me with EPP. I like to sit and sew and make those tiny stitches and the time passes by and I find it so rewarding to turn it over and you don't, I don't like doing that bit. So I, I like to, I like to get that over and done with as quickly as I can. So that's one example for EPP. What about zip insertion? I've only got half a zip, well half a fabric, but normally with your zip, oh that's an invisible one, I didn't want that there with me. Uh, with the zip, you can use them for invisible tips. Um, normally, you would be, let's open that up, right sides together, pin, 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 pin. And then after you've pin, 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 pinned, I'd tack, 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 tack by hand, then take the pins out and then sew the zip in because you'll find it very difficult to sew around pins on something like this. So it's quite a lengthy process, but it's worth doing. However, when you've got a glue pen, all you're going to do 
is to run the glue stick, I've got a curly zip, look, just along the zip tape and then, oops, pop it down where you need it and then you can sew. You can even put a bit of glue down there to hold the seam down if that's the way that you're sewing your zip in. And that will hold, I mean it's not, it will pull away if you need to reposition, but that will hold until the glue is removed. Ever so busy for these, good for you. Um, what about applique? Now I started making a cushion cover yesterday and it needs a little bit of something else down that brown bit. So I thought I might put a little row of chickens. And I could needle turn these, but I just thought it might be quite nice to sew them on. So let's, let's go for this little one here because I haven't got any legs to cut out. So I'm just cutting around. I could be a lot more accurate. Um, but I don't mind it fraying a little bit around the edge because this is frayed anyway. That was the kind of the look. It's a vintage shabby chic affair. But I've got a tiny little chicken now. So if I was to... Oh, where have you gone? <laughs> if I was to stick a pin in it, mean, imagine... I mean, I know there are different ways of, of using applique and you could use a heat and bond and stuff like that. But if you haven't got any, that's actually that way around. If I needed that to stay in place, I've got a pin right through the middle and there's no way I can sew around that. And you will find if you just hold that there, that as you're stitching around, it's going to move slightly. It does need sticking down somehow. So I'm just going to paint the back with glue and then stick it on. And if I get a little bit extra on here, that's going to dry clear. We might come back later on and see what happens with that. Um, otherwise, damp cloth and that'll just wipe away. But now that's not going to move as I'm sewing around it. You can see I'm pushing it there and it's not moving. Now you've got, remember, the refill that comes with the pen and then you've got six refills on, refills? We have six, I've got this, I keep going posh. I don't know what's happening to me. Six refills as well, um, all in different colours. So if you if you do need to see where you're gluing, um, there's the this yellow, white and pink. And it's the pink and the white one that are included in here as well. It's a white one. Let's take a look. I'll put, it, I'll put it in and show you how you change them as well. I will put it back again because this is obviously a new one. But you simply screw that all the way up until you see the white bit at the bottom. Then we're going to pull that off. I've taken the cap off the end of this one. That goes back on there and then you pull it off. It's a blue one, that's a surprise. And then you can just screw that back in again. So you're not touching the glue and you can see how much you get there as well. That's going to last a long time. Okay, so that's that. Let's pop this back in here. Oh, I'm glad you're liking this one. Lots of you are multi-buying this as well. Well done. Um, it's, uh, you, you're just going to find it so useful. It's one of those things, if you haven't used a glue pen before, um, you're probably thinking, oh, I don't need one of those. But once you start using one, uh, your pins are going to be a thing of the past. No, they're not. There's going to be a place for pins always. But certainly in tricky areas, for your zip insertion, for your small pieces of uh, applique, you'll just find it really useful. Even if you've got a seam that's just fighting back, if you have, um, if you're sewing something like cork or uh, the PU, the faux leathers that we do, um, and you try and fold the seam, out, you can't press things like that. But if you just run a, a line of glue across it, it holds the seam back. It stops it bending back again. Um, and I know this is um, a canvas. It's not a faux leather. Um, but if I just put a row of glue or a line of glue across there, that's going to hold that seam down perfectly. So maybe you're making bag handles, maybe your fabric's too thick to pin. I know you've got your clever wonder clips, but this is an alternative for you to hold that seam in place as you're sewing. So if I've got my four layers of fabric that I'm using to make the handle, and it's quite thick and bulky, you can still hold all of that in place as, uh, before you sew. And don't worry about sewing through this, it's not going to gunk up your needle. Any kind of adhesive that, that you use with sewing need to be made for use with sewing. Because if not, if you're going to start using paper glues, then, I mean, you can use them to hold fabric together, but don't sew through them and don't put them under your sewing machine. But that's what these have been designed for. So again, if you're 
Zips are kind of the first experience I had of glue sticks. Um, and it just makes them so much easier. There's different ways you can do it. You can use quilted tape and things like that if you don't want to pin. But this to me is just really quick and easy. And even on decorative zips like this one, it dries clear. So I don't, I've got glue all over the place look and I really don't want to see it. But when that goes on here, that's held in place. No pins. I can move it around. It sits perfectly flat. And that again, I normally leave it for just a few seconds before I sew, so it really gets some purchase. And then that will stay there while I'm sewing the zip in place without any pins at all. It's just so simple and so easy when you've got the right tools for the job. So here you're saving a couple of pounds, remember, when you order these together. Um, if you have a look on the website on sewingstreet.com, they are available individually as well. I wouldn't buy this on its own because you will use all the ink up ink. You will use all the glue up because I'm saying pen. Um, and then you'll be coming back for refill. So may as well take advantage of that one PMP of 3.95 all day. If you come back tomorrow and you think, oh, I should have got some more refills, we'll charge you another 3.95 postage. But if you order later on today, so maybe you go for the early bird because that's where you're making your two pound saving. And then you think, oh, I should have got some refills because you will one day want refills. We're not going to put any extra postage because we, we accumulate all of your orders. So anything that you order before midnight um, will be added to that order without charging any extra PMP. Don't run out of ink, uh, ink. Don't run out of glue with these. Go for the extras. I know you're getting, well, there's eight altogether, including the one in the pen, the extra refill and the extra six, but you will go through them. Oh, just a quick word, don't leave the tops off. They dry up. Um, and they do dry up quite quickly. So just get into the habit, like when you lock your rotary cutter, you put your cap on at all times. Um, and that'll mean that they last even longer. If they do dry, if you leave that off and you've got a little bit sticking out like that, chop it off with a knife and it'll still be nice and fresh underneath, but then you've wasted a bit of glue. But it's not the end of the world if that happens, but just a, just a little tip for you there. Now, if you wanted to go for the refills on their own, there you go, you pop them to your order. And that's six refills in different colours as well. And they're, they're not going to go off. There's no, no sell-by date or anything. So, <laughs> you know, you could keep those for months and months. Um, I don't think you will. I think you're going to be using those a lot. They're £6.99. pence. So you only need one pen and then just keep changing the refills and changing the refills. because That makes it a very affordable way of doing it. So that's your early book. Really busy for that one. Um, oh, if you want to get in touch, by the way, maybe you're a, you're a glue pen fan like myself. Um, come and let us know what you use your glue pen for. Is it different to what I use mine for? Go to our Facebook page. Now, I had a few messages yesterday on the, face, uh, on the Sewing Street fans page. I'm, I'm not on that. I'm just on the Facebook. So Sewing Street TV. And if you go to Visitor Posts, that's the page I've got open right now, so I can answer your questions, we can share your pictures, we can come and say hello and happy Easter, and what are you doing today? Oh, oh, a quarter of the refill stock sold out, by the way. Oh, thank you, Judith. Happy Easter to you too. And happy Easter to June. She says, thank you for doing this competition. Oh, yeah. Oh, thank you, June. Forgot to mention that. And giving us a little fun. Um, oh, no, 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 no. She's put the answers there. If you haven't seen any of the other shows, have a look at June's post, she's put all the answers. We've hidden, really well hidden, Easter eggs around the set. You can still have a chance of winning this morning, it's the last day today. Um, if you spot the Easter eggs, put, put a post on our Facebook page, all the details are on there as well, and we'll pick somebody out that will win two Debbie Shaw panels, how generous am I, and two metres of fabric as well. So. Where do you think the eggs are? It's not as if we've got the biggest set and the smallest eggs, is it? <laughs> Caroline's messaged in. Hello, good morning. Um, she says, yesterday she built up the confidence to attempt her first line bag. She says, thank you so much, Sewing Street team, for all of the great shows and demos. Thank you. She's a true inspiration, she says. Oh, thank you. We really appreciate that as well. It's, it, it's lovely to hear your comments. 
And it's nice for you to be part of Sewing Street as well. We wouldn't be here without you. Um, so if you do have any suggestions, if you do have any comments, and it's lovely to see what you've made as well. That, that's the one thing that gives me a real buzz is just seeing your makes and, and having a read about what you're up to as well. It would be a very lonely place if it wasn't for you. It would just be me, Kat and Hannah. And Hannah's not even here. She's at home. <laughs> It is, it's going, to be, it's going to be quite strange, you know, when, uh, when things get back to normal again, which hopefully won't be too long. Isn't it odd, we were saying last night, uh, my husband and I, um, when, when you're watching TV and it's not current and you see people standing next to each other, don't you think, no, no, you, you're standing too close. It's, it's a little bit like, um, do you remember when the smoking ban came in? And now you look at old footage and people are smoking in an office and it's like, oh, you can't do that. But isn't it funny how we've adapted so quickly? It's very strange to stand next to somebody these days. So, oh, Hannah Producer is at home. She says, hello, hi, Hannah, good morning, happy Easter. And where's my coffee? It's over there. <laughs> you'll have to come and get it, but you'll have to get it from two metres away. <laughs> So yeah, come and be part of the show this morning. I hope you're having a wonderful day today. And apparently it's going to be really sunny again. So if uh, I, I, might, I might do a little bit of English paper piecing in the garden this afternoon. I do have a long extension lead, so I have taken the sewing machine outside before. But my, my garden table rattles a lot and all it does is bounce around all over the place. So it's hand sewing in the garden for me. Um, Hannah Producer, it's EPPing today. We're all a bit of an EPP. Um, addict here at Sewing Street because uh, Kat who's directing she's next door here um, EPPs as well <laughs> she's giving you a knock um, and Hannah producer EPPs and Sally Ann in the next hour is going to be EPPing and actually I've got do you remember the linens that we did yesterday I'm going to EPP a cushion cover out of those just with a, a hexagon um, kind of accent across one side in greys and creams if you're EPPing if you're new to sewing this morning, then what on earth is EPP? <laughs> Do you know, I always say I don't like jargon. Isn't that, isn't that me talking a load of jargon? Um, English paper piecing. Basically wrapping fabric around paper pieces. I've just put everything away to tidy up because I've lost them. Like so. And then sewing them together by hand to create a really traditional patchwork effect. We'll have, have lots more um, chat about EPP in the next hour. Um, we've got a, we have a Hayley Head of TV and we have a Hayley Head of Marketing. Hayley Head of Marketing says hello this morning. So, oh, there's four of us here this morning. Oh! <laughs> We'll have, do you know, we'll have to have one of those, is it, is it Zoom or Skype or, or TeamView or something like that where we can have everybody's, everybody working on the screen. That'd be, I can't figure out how to do that one, I'm sure. Anyway, EPP, you've got English paper pieces. It's only called English paper piecing. It's actually, um, uh, was developed in America and it's called English paper piecing because the Americans thought English sounded posh. Um, so it was a marketing ploy. So it's not really English. But however, you have your paper piece, you pop your fabric around the outside, you will wrap the fabric over. I like to put a little dot of glue on the joints there just to hold everything in place. Lots of different shapes you can use. It doesn't have to be hexagons, but this was the original one. Originally, you'd have left the paper pieces in there and there would have probably been newspaper because they were used as um, insulation. So that's my star sign. Then you take the two pieces together like this. You put them right sides together. You sew across the edge with tiny, tiny stitches and then you open them up. So you're going to build up whatever you like, whether it's just a, a piece of applique or a, a quilt, um, just sew, hand sewing. So you can see the next hexagon goes in there like so. And so on and so forth. More about that in the next hour with Sally Ann. Sally Ann Harrison has very kindly um, made a video for us. So she's going to do a full demonstration in the nine o'clock show. Checking your messages. Um, oh, morning Debbie says, Jenny, morning. Did the Easter Bunny visit you? No, but he visited Cat. Show, show me pictures this morning of a very scary somebody dressed up in a rabbit outfit running around the streets of her village. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, we don't really do, don't really do Easter. 
I'm sure it was meant in good faith. Um, okay, this is the rainbow fabric bundle. So they are available individually as well if you have a look on the website, sewingstreet.com. But the whole lot together isn't that so pretty. So we've got the navy, um, bright red, lovely colour, emerald green, um, purples, cerise, uh, royal blue, and then the bright yellow as well. What a lovely colour combination. That would make a fantastic quilt, wouldn't it? For £23.99. Um, there's three and a half metres altogether, so that's quite sizeable. But maybe just making a few rainbows to go in windows would be a nice idea. For £23.99, 100% cotton. They're half a metre in width, so I'll just show you here. It's a nice weight of cotton too. Um, I know, particularly if you're new to Sewing Street, or the world of shopping telly, um, 112 centimetres wide, half a metre in length. Um, you might be a bit reluctant to buy off the telly. Personally, I like to go into shops and I like to feel fabric and I like to hold it up against myself if it's going to be something that I wear and I like to feel the drape of it. Um, we can't kind of do that in this day and age, can we? So we try and describe these to you as best as, as possible. Sometimes with cottons, particularly when they're affordable, they can be quite see-through. That's not, look, I know there's no light behind me, but you can't, can't see through that. I can't see you at all, it's completely black. So it's got a nice tight weave, which means that it's going to be great for any kind of patchworking. It's got a good weight to it. So if you want for these um, individually, um, you can buy more than half a metre at a time that comes in one piece. You could use this for dressmaking as well. It's a really good weight, you can see that close up. So don't be put off by the price being low for what you're getting, is what I'm going around the trees and houses to get to. Um, we just, we like to bring you value. We like to bring you big names as well, quality fabrics, that's what we like. Because we like working with them. Um, Navy on its own has been really busy. Um, so by the half metre, again, if you just ordered half a metre of this, it's only £3.49. Uh, and again, if you ordered more than one, so if you wanted a couple of metres, buy four, and they'll all come in, in one long piece. It's good navy though, isn't it? It's proper navy. Nice and deep in colour, goes great with, um, with whites and reds if you wanted that nautical, seasidey kind of look. But again, it's got a really nice drape to it. So is that going to be um, maybe borders or sashing if you're quilting? Could be a line, actually bag linings at this kind of, that's a, that's a great price, isn't it, for a bag lining? Because you could easily do bag linings and pockets from a piece that big for quite a sizeable tote bag. Worth building up your stash when you see prices so low. So on its own, £3.49. pence. And you know, navy, navy on, it, on its own, it doesn't look very spring-like, does it? It looks quite, I wasn't say dull, no, dark and classy. But when you do mix these with whites and reds and yellows and oranges and brighter colours, it's, it, it kind of defines the paler colours, doesn't it? And there's nothing more summery than nautical blue and white. But as part of the bundle, it works as a rainbow, doesn't it? I know there's not navy in the rainbow, but it is a kaleidoscope of colours here. So navy, red, emerald green, purple, there's uh, the pink, the blue, and we've got the lovely yellow there as well. The yellow's got the shading on it, hasn't it? Pretty. All for £23.99. Well, what are you going to do with it? So that's the first bundle. We've got more of a, a pastel bundle for you as well. Now we're calling this a mixer bundle because we're kind of thinking you're going to mix it with other stuff. But you could do a lovely pastel rainbow quilt with these too. But these have got like um, a shadow on them. So they're quite textural. And again, you've got nice quality of fabric there as well. Three metres in total. A lovely grassy green, maybe you're appliqueing. Um, could be trees, could be um, scenery. Nice background colour as well. Um, my husband mowed the lawn before I got home yesterday. I love the smell of freshly cooked grass. It just says summertime to me. Um, because it reminds me of sports day at school. I've got a long memory. <laughs> so there's the green. And then you've got your sky, because this looks quite cloudy, doesn't it? That would make an amazing sky. And then we have the lilac. And the pink. And the orange. 
and the yellow. Oh, I'm thinking tequila sunrise now. And it's not even nine o'clock in the morning yet. So all of those three meters in total here for you, 23 pounds and 99 pence. And again, are, they are available individually. If you have a look on the website on sewingstreet.com, you can buy them all individually there, if you so wished. Oh, let's move on. Oh, we've got something new. I love a panel. And it is a bundle, so you're getting fabric as well. Um, available on their own, but this is the bundle. But isn't that pretty? You've got two panels. Now, I would be making cushion covers on there, uh, from there, because you've got the two that are not identical. I'll show you that in a sec. Um, but they match perfectly. I just think that's really pretty. Or you could make two quilts, two small quilts, add an extra border. Actually, if you want to put a border on that one, I wonder what that will look like. There you go. So that can make quite a small quilt, quite a large quilt. What else? I wonder if the red would go. No, the red wouldn't go. What else have we got? They've got blues. Would the blue go? The blue works. Have we got a green? Nope. Um, purples. No, I think, I think that's it. Um, unless you have a look at the canvases that we had on, <clears throat> oh, excuse me, yesterday. There were greys in there as well. <clears throat> <coughs> Do excuse me, um, but they are different. So if you have a look at that one, um, we've got the bird chirping over its shoulder, and you've got the flowers. I, th I thought they were fish. They're they're buds, aren't they? They're buds and a flower. And then on the second one, you've got different birds and different flowers, but they're all the same. Oh, red would go nicely with that one because it would pick out the, the reds here, wouldn't it? So you can make a nice border there. But I'd go for the orange for both of them. I think you're going to need to make it bigger. Um, unless you're making something like a cushion cover where that's the exact size that you want, I think you're going to have to expand that a little bit. Um, so if you have teal, that would work really well. If you have the pale blue fabric, that would work as well. Um, it's got a white background, it's got a pale beige, so that would work. And I'd put a border all the way around, and then I might put another border to make it even bigger, and then put some binding on it. And you don't really have to do anything else to this, but if you wanted to free motion embroider around some of the shapes, that would look really pretty. Oh, I might, I could do that later on, couldn't I? We've got the Elna 720 coming up at 10 o'clock this morning. I might just pinch a panel and see what it looks like. Because if I use it, it's mine. That's my thinking. I was going to do some uh, free motion embroidery yesterday with the early bird, but it, it went and sold out. This is the fabric that comes with it. So you're getting both pieces. Oh, this is lovely. It's so delicate. You've got the same print as the, uh, the large panel, but kind of reduced in size. Look how delicate this is. Even the background, it looks like it's been stenciled through doilies. Really classy design, but really like, fine little areas here. And look at the dragonflies. And uh, we've got butterflies. Look at the size of that butterfly compared to the bird. Is that a tiny bird or a huge butterfly? Really pretty. Oh, I had to tell some sparrows off yesterday. It was, it was quite funny. We were sat in, in the garden, myself and Kimberly, my daughter, and there was four sparrows fighting in the tree behind us. They were so noisy. And Kim said, one of those sparrows actually got the other one. It's pecking it on the head. And they were squealing and whistling. And so I went and gave them a telling off. And they, they stopped. They did stop. Now then, um, you're getting the both of those together. See, I'd split, I'd split it up just really quickly. If I, if I was making something with one of those panels, if you're going to use this one as a border, it loses itself. Let me show you that way. It's, it's kind of lost. They blend into each other too well. So in that case, I really would add a little bit of colour and then use that one as a border just to break it up and then both of them stand out they don't kind of blend into each other too much so have, have a look on the website we, we've got different colored um, fabrics on the website as well if you don't have anything already at home 
Right. Now that we've got less than 20 of the bundle remaining now. Oh, we're having a busy morning this morning. Right. Are you eating Easter eggs already? Right. Um, if you want to give these individually, they are available as such. So there's your panel. There's two panels really, you could use it as one. You can make a really lovely wall hanging. Um, if you've got one of those fancy hangers, it would look really pretty. So I'm saying there's two of them. You use them as one if you like for £6.99. And if you just wanted to go for the birdcage fabric on its own. I like the way the birds aren't in the cage. Got flowers in the cage. That's it. And that's £6.99. And as it's available by the half metre, if you wanted to make a dress out of it, then just order more and it'll come to you again in one long piece. So that's £6.99. 100% cotton. Isn't it lovely and delicate though? Look at the really pretty print on there. And the, the fineness of the print, when you look at the, the ironwork on the cage, it's, it's so, so lovely. It's a very, very busy print, but it works. Even having the flowers in the background, it doesn't confuse everything too much. And it's not, it's not bold and, you know, if I, if I describe this to you, you've got oranges, you've got teal, to think, oh, that's going to be a little bit bold. But it isn't. It's, it's very subtle. It's very pretty. And it's very not many left. Hmm. Okay, let's move on to the next bundle. You've seen these before, but these I, I love these fabrics. Um, we've got a, a couple of things. This is, this is the cat. My daughter made this um, with the cat fabric. We don't have that. Oh, that's in the next bundle. Um, but with the cat fabric. And this is actually balls of wool. So um, she, she wanted to make something with the fabric. She said, I want to make that cat that's on the fabric. So she just drew herself a pattern. Um, and that's how it turned out, which looks just like the cat on the fabric. I just think it's loads of fun. Could be a doorstop, a little toy or an ornament maybe. And then she's put a curly tail on and attached that with a button at the back. I just think that's really sweet and very, very simple to do. So that's the, the cat fabric. Then have we got the grey spotty one? Yes, we have. We've mixed these up a little bit. Storage boxes, maybe something to put your, um, your sewing bits and bobs in. Um, and this is reversible as well. So I've used the script fabric on the outside and the spotty fabric from the next bundle on the inside. I just choose the fabrics. I don't know what bundles are going to be put together. Um, so that's a nice little project for you as well. Um, you know, not everybody is a, a patchwork or a quilter. Maybe it's homewares that you want to make. And again, you could make some beautiful bags with these. Um, these little boxes are so simple to make. There's lots of tutorials on, on YouTube for things like that. Um, and you can make them in all different sizes as well. So it could be a drawstring bag, maybe a little gift bag. So lots of, lots of things you can be making with those. And really nice quality. This is Riley Blake. So in the bundle we have classic roses look at that that is so pretty so English countryside uh, country garden isn't it really traditional beautiful soft colors it's got like a, a mint color in the background and pinks and just so pretty and who would have thought that roses would go so well with balls of yarn <laughs> but they do because um, it looks like a spot from a distance but when you look closely these are actually balls of yarn with the, um, with the wool coming off there, because this is actually cat themed. Well, we'll get to the cats later. Um, even the script, I like the subtlety of this print because the gold bits on here are whiskers. Now we did have a, a translation from some of these words and um, everybody wants to be a cat. I can't remember, it's a French script and I'm kind of okay with French, but I didn't, I didn't recognize a lot of this. Again, I like the subtlety. If you know somebody or if it's you that's a, a fan of cats and you like working with cat fabric, this doesn't shout cats at you. It's, it's not novelty. It's like the, the classy version. Um, so again, look, you've got these tiny little whiskers. 
And if you do understand French, then you'll, you'll be able to translate that for me. So, c'est la vie is, that's life, isn't it? And thank you, as, oh, I don't know. I'm, I'm sure some of it says everyone wants to be a cat. Um, then we have chevrons. And more subtle cats, look at this one. And these are, are foiled, so you get a little bit of a glimmer with it, not too much. You know, it's not shiny, sparkly. You've got little cats on there. And then finally, your, your cat. All for £38.94. Have a look at those balls of yarn while we're there. Isn't that clever? I, do, I just love the way from a distance it looks like a spot. Uh, it looks like a spot, but when you look really closely, it is balls of yarn. It's really sweet. Stripped. Chevrons, that's got the foiling on it as well. Cat spot and cats. But I like the colours. And I did mention earlier on, we like, we like a bit of quality fabric. We, we should be sewing Quality Street. Um, that would be fun. Um, and these are Riley Blake, so it's an American company. They, they are renowned for quality of fabrics and quirkiness. It's family business. But it's the quality that's the most important thing. It's a little bit like when you see a, a named brand of anything, whether it's a sewing machine or washing machine. If it has a name, they have to they have to live up to that name, so to speak. And you tend to get the quality with those. So all of those for your £38.94. If you have a look on the website, you can buy them individually. The second bundle is the pink option. So this has got four fabrics in it. So again, you've got the, the classic rose. These are a little bit more colourful. So there's dark greens, teals, pinks, lime greens on a white background in, there you go, in this one. That's the balls of yarn one again, in the pink. Cat spot faces in grey. And then the chevron in pink as well. But what a lovely collection. The quilting, homewares, cushion covers. Little girls dresses, pyjamas, and you can, if you wanted to, mix and match the bundles together because the colour palette is the same. So even these two, you've got the same colour teal in both of those. That would go really well with the green spot as well as the yarn, as well as the, the yarn in the green, in the teal. They, they all go really well together, even if you just wanted to go like that. Or cat face spots. Or let me do chevrons. That'd make a statement, wouldn't it? Or the florals together. And remember, we've only got one postage all day long as well. So it's just £3.95, no matter what you order. If you wanted to order the Elna 720, which is Nearly £1,400. We're not going to add any extra to your postage. And that's quite heavy. So, there's the pink and the script and the cat. So that's your pink bundle. So you've got four half metres, two metres in total for your £25.96. Really pretty, classy, but a little bit quirky, I think, with that one. This is Peppolino. Blue and white, isn't that really summery? Love these colours. I'm going to open one up to show you. Um, that's the size that you have. Again, have a look on the website if you wanted these individually or if you wanted to order more than half a metre. Um, but again, a lovely quality fabric with a really nice drape. Dressmaking, homewares, quilting, it doesn't matter. You've got a lovely look. It's, it's quite, um, I don't know, the, the colours I think are summery, but it, it's got a wintry feel, it's almost a bit twiggy, this one. But really smart and clean with the blues and the whites, perfect for summertime. I think, I think blue's my favourite colour. So yeah, it looks like, um, it looks like a, a winter berry in summery colours. How do you buy your fabric? Do you buy it because it's trendy or do you buy it because it's, um, 
It's something new that's come out, so you like to have the latest of anything. I, I, I just buy what I like. If I see a winter fabric and it's the middle of July, I'll buy a winter fabric, I don't care. Um, and do you buy the fabric with the project in mind? So you see this and you think, oh, I could make this with this. Or do you have your project already and you know exactly the fabric that you want to go with it? So which comes first? How do you work? I do a bit of both, to be honest. I make a lot of bags, <laughs> hundreds of bags. Um, and I'll have the style of the bag in mind and then I'll think, right, I want that kind of fabric to make that bag. And that's probably the most difficult way to do it. Um, it's a little bit like if you're out shopping for clothes and you know exactly that outfit you want, you'll never find it. And it's a bit the same with fabric. So if I have in my mind, right, I want this fabric to go with this bag, it doesn't work all the time. But sometimes I'll see a fabric like this and I think, actually, that, I'd make a skirt out of that one. I think that would be really pretty. Maybe with a gathered waist, an elasticated waist, um, a nice long ankle skimming summery skirt, or maybe a wrap over skirt with big white, oh no no, with red buttons down the side. That would be a bit of a statement. But you're getting all of these. There we go. There we go, like that, like that. But everything matches in the bundle. So if you go for the whole lot, you could do a bit of patchwork, can you? Like patchwork clothing, not necessarily quilts, that would be nice. Or just have, if you use the fabric the, the, the wrong way around, or the selvage at the top, oh, you could make like the A-line panels and have a really nice swishy skirt, but all in different colours of the same blues. You could easily do that with this, uh, with the bundle. So that's the random spots. There's two versions of this. So one has the blue background, one has the white background. So that's the blue background and that's the white background. So it's like the, um, the negative, that's the word I was thinking of. And then we've got really delicate fern leaves, but when I open this one up, it looks like chevrons. So when you see from a distance, you see that zigzag kind of effect. And when you see close up, you see just really delicate ferns. Yeah, and then finally, you've got that one, which is again, that smaller design. So all for £38.93, 100% cotton, really nice quality. And all the same color blue. So they, they mix together really well, as you can see. So remember if you've got any questions or anything or you want to let us know what you're up to today, go on our Facebook page, not the fans one, the other one. You can go on the fans one if you want, but I don't get to read those. Um, and I've got my fan, I'm not checking my emails. I'm checking your messages to see if any have come through. Okay, let's give you a reminder of the rainbow, oh, the early bird first of all. Um, oh gosh, it's been so busy for this one. Um, it's a Soline fabric glue pen. I use these for English paper piecing particularly, but um, for putting zips in, it's like pins in a stick. Um, so instead of pinning smaller applique pieces or pinning zips, I use a glue stick. I know there's lots of different ways you can do that without using pins, but this is what I use. And you're getting so much here. There's, um, there's the glue already in the pen. There's one refill included as well. And as your early bird, we're going to give you six extra refills too. So you've got eight glue sticks all together. And you can multi-order these as well, but it's been really, really busy. You're saving two pounds when you go for these two. I'd stock up. In fact, I wouldn't, unless you're gonna give these to somebody else, I wouldn't go for two early birds. I would go for an early bird and then the extra refills. We'll give you the details later on. But £10.98 for both of those is honestly such good value for money. I, I've, I've paid that much just for a pen before now. And other brands don't necessarily come with their own refill, but this one does. So no matter which colour glue is in the pen, they dry clear. So you can see where you're gluing. They're designed to use with sewing needles, so they're not going to gunge them up. And the glue washes out afterwards as well. So if you do have a, an over spillage of glue, um, don't worry, just take a damp cloth and wipe it away. So well worth getting hold of those. That's one of those more modern tools. These kind of things weren't around when I learned to sew. We did everything the hard way. Um, but these make your life so much easier. It makes your tacking or basting a thing of the past tack with glue instead. And you can get around to the fun bit of the sewing even quicker. 
So that's your early bird. Reduce price as long as we have the stock. If you wanted to go for the extra refills, and I do recommend that you do, because you will run out of glue at some point, you may as well have them there in your stash already. Those are just £6.99. And there's six of those. Now for one, for one sticker, for one refill, £3.99, on average, if you have a look around and do, you know, plus you've got delivery as well. You've got delivery here, but it's only one all day, so it makes it worth, worth your, your while. Um, so if you've already gone for your early bird and you want extra refills, even if you've already paid for your early bird and you want extra refills, get hold of these now. We're not going to charge you any postage. There's nothing worth because when you when you put the lid on, I've I've got quite a few of these pens, um, and I run out. I put the lid on. I put them in. I've, I've got one of those little shopping baskets, prop, um, proper little basket that I keep all of my glues in, and it's got quite a few pens in, and they're all empty, and I forget until I go back to the oh I need some glue. Oh oh I need some oh, so it's worth having the refill so that you can just keep filling them up. I think I'm on my last one at the moment to be honest. I must I must stock up there. So all together, um, you've got six in the refill pack. There's two already in here. But it's been a very busy morning this Easter Sunday morning. So if you're going to order, do so sooner rather than later. We wouldn't like you to miss out. You know, we, we will get them back again. Unless it's an early bird again, you're not going to make that £2 saving. I'd happily pay £2 more for them. Um, but why? Why bother? That's, that's the cost of a little Easter egg, isn't it? Um, so £10.98, or half the cost of your postage, if you look at it that way as well. So that's your early bird. We have a couple of ranges of rainbows for you, so we're calling this the mixer. I don't know why. But that's your bundle. So we have the lilac and the pink and the orange and the royal blue and the grass green and you've got the yellow there as well but these are available individually too. If you wanted to go for the complete bundle, then you can do. We'll give the details in a second. And you can order on the website. You can order on sewingstreet.com. Take a look around at everything else that we have available for you there as well if you've got a few, few minutes to spare. Or you can order on the phone lines number down here, 0800 001 4433, and that is a UK-based phone line as well. And that's the number to phone if you've got any queries or questions too. But have a look on the website, we've got some, got some nice things on there as well. So, individually, should we go lilac because it's the one in front of me? This has been the second most popular. Guess what the most popular is? I love that shading, it just adds a little bit of interest. I think it's so much more interesting with um, a, a very small print or shadowing like this than a plain fabric. It still has the same effect as plain if you're using this as a, as a border or sashing on, on a quilt, so it's not going to interfere with the patterned fabric, but it just breaks up that block a little bit. It just breaks up the, um, the, a plain print, just a plain colour. So that is, I like lilac. It reminds me of crocuses. There we go. And if you buy more than one, they all come joined up. So if you wanted a metre of fabric, order two units and it'll come as a metre of fabric. Look at this pink. And they are 112 centimetres wide. So this is, this is a fuchsia, isn't it? Just thinking of flowers in the garden. Don't have many flowers in my garden. It's all lots of shades of green. But when, uh, it just means that when a flower does come up, oh, they really stand out. I do have a cherry blossom tree and it's absolutely full. That kind of colour, isn't it? That, oh, I love cherry blossoms. Um, and I even love it when the petals fall and it looks like we've got pink snow all over the grass. Oh, Jane's messaged in. Hi, Jane. And she says, oh, she's asked if the glue affects the sewing needle. No. Um, if you're going to use, there's lots of different glue sticks around, most of them are for, for paper. Don't use a paper one with fabric, always go for any kind of adhesive that's been designed for use with fabric because they're designed not to gunk up your sewing machine needles or your hand sewing needles, so no, it won't gunk up your needle. Um, that's the same with uh, any kind of sprays, if it's a 505 spray or the 404 sprays or your June Taylor sprays, as long as it's been made to, for use with fabric, you're going to be fine with those. Julianne spotted all of the Easter eggs. 
This is the most popular fabric. I think so may know why, if you're going for the bird fabric as well. Gorgeous orange, bright citrus. Now on my screen it's looking a little bit pink. This is bright orange. It is beautiful. It's, it's summery and warm and bold and just gorgeous. Half a metre is £3.99. We're calling it tangerine and it's exactly that kind of colour. So pretty. Uplifting colours. Isn't it nice to see the rainbow colours around? Summer day, sun shines out, skies are blue, I'm, I'm assuming. <laughs> Got no windows in here. Um, but these are happy colours. It's all, all very uplifting in these weird days. This is my favourite colour. And there we go. It's a proper royal blue. We're calling it denim. I, who comes up with the names? I don't think it looks like denim. I just think, I think this is really classic royal blue. It's like a colour of sapphires. It looks like a swimming pool, doesn't it? Couldn't you just dive in there? Oh, Susan's messaged. Hi, Susan. Oh, oh, she says it's mating season. Oh, for the sparrows. <laughs> what are you doing this morning? I was saying earlier on, if you didn't hear, I've got four sparrows fighting. That is probably what it was. There's probably one female and, four, and three males yesterday, but they had a telling off and they stopped it anyway. So that's all their fun. That's what they were up to. <laughs> this is chartreuse. Pea green, I would call this one. And this, this the grass green, sports day green, isn't it? Freshly cut grass. Oh, love that smell. Did we have rain yesterday? Gosh, I'm not many cat, cat who's uh, directing today said so there was a bit of rain and a bit of a thunderstorm. We had nothing like. When I was um, prepping the show with Hannah from home, Last night she was saying, oh, I had to come inside because it's cloudy. We didn't get any clouds or anything. Probably make up for it today. Finally, how's that for a splash of, splash, splash, splash of sunshine? That's daffodils, isn't it? And, and oh, what else have we got that's yellow? The, um, the primula in my garden, a bright yellow, this kind of colour. The colour of sunflowers, the colour of the sun, the colour of the sand. Sun's never that colour, is it? It's kind of a muddy brown, but that's, that's the colour we'd like sun to be. No, actually, we'd like sun to be white. That probably means you're in the Caribbean or something. But a beautiful collection, whether you're going for them all together or if you're going for them individually. And very affordable, very affordable prices for this one. If you want to do the whole bundle, you, you will receive all six pieces. So that's three metres of fabric in total for just £23.99. I've had a message from Nora. Hi, Nora. Just hello. Happy Easter, happy Easter to you too. Thank you, Nora. She's loving the fabrics this morning. George, well, I'm pleased. Um, could we have a full view of the, the Pipino Lodge Floral on Blue? Of course I can. Thinking it would make a great dress. It would do. How's that? You might have to order more than one half metre. <laughs> unless, you, unless you're making a mini or a boob tube. But I think you're right. I think that would make a stunning dress. <clears throat> so if you go for the, the other one, and in fact, if you go for as much meterage as that as you like, so you've got your, your dress like so. And then maybe have a contrast. So if you just ordered an extra half metre, you can maybe do straps out of that if it's a summer dress, or if you've got a collar on your dress, or maybe contrast on the cuff around the sleeve, just to break it up a little, uh, or, or a belt. I am a mannequin. So you could do something like that just to, to break it up a little bit. Or if you have um, a big border around the hemline in the contrast, I think would look good. Have you got a pattern in mind already? Do share. So you can make a, a really pretty border with the contrast. But it is very summery, isn't it? That's what I love about it. I do like blue. 
Now, Norma only messaged in about five or ten minutes ago. We tried to get to your messages as quickly as possible. We are still live here on Seven Quarter. So if you have got any questions or if you want to see anything in particular, then send us a message. If you send it on the Facebook page, then I, I get to see them here. Um, otherwise, otherwise, where are also people messaging in, Kat? Because you, you can message on the Facebook page, but I don't get to see those. They would then have to go to Hayley B, who's at home, and Hayley B would then pass them on to Kat, who's in the box room, who then passes them on to ear, not not, uh, passes them on to me down my ear. So you, 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 that's probably why it took five or ten minutes instead of being instant. But we will get to you. That's our Facebook. It's, it's not the sewing foot, sewing... <laughs> sewing Street <laughs> Sewing Street fans page it's the Sewing Street page you can leave a message on the fans page if you like but I, I don't, I'm not on that so I don't get to see that one. Oh, oh, the rainbow mixer bundle we've only got four of these left what are you going to make? Um, so the next four people to check out your baskets or order on the phone lines these are yours well done Nice little stash builder, that one as well, isn't it? Three metres for £23.99. pence. That's great value. We're running out of time really quickly, aren't we? Um, we do have another rainbow selection for you. And these are plain cottons. And there are six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven um, altogether. Um, each measuring half a metre. And you're getting all of those the navy the red the emerald green the purple the pink that oh oh nora oh same color so if you wanted a plane to go with your pattern then that that would work with all of that and that one mm. makes your pattern go a little bit further when you add a plane in there doesn't it i wonder if you wanted a plane, if you're going to go for, that would be good, or that works well as well, doesn't it? Hmm. It, do, it does, it makes the pinks a little bit bolder, doesn't it? The pinks really stand out when you put them with colours like that. So pink and the royal and the yellow and the red and the emerald and the purple and the navy. All of those for £23.99, 100% cotton, 112 centimetres wide, half a metre in each one of those. If you wanted to go for any of those individually, um, they are of a... Should we do it? OK. So purple, the regal colour, and that's the... The width that you have there so you've got quite a sizable piece you've got enough for the backs of two 17 inch square cushion covers easily handbag linings maybe join them all together make a pair of curtains you'll need some lining with that as well there's it's a bit flimsy for curtains but it is summertime um three pounds 49 for half a meter order more than one they all come joined up so that's your purple then we have the emerald green Which is this one? Again, a really rich colour. Look at the bits on here. Um, for three pounds forty-nine again. Then there's the bright pillar box red. Which is this one? Scarlet tomato red. Bright, bold, <laughs> and a really useful colour. You'd be amazed at the amount of fabrics that have just a little dot of red in them. So it can really bring it out. Again, that's £3.49. And that classic navy. This has been a really busy one. So smart and stylish. Mix it with whites, mix it with reds. Create your nautical looks. Or just plain navy with a bit of red top stitching. I would lift it a little. And again, that's £3.49. They're all £3.49. May as well stop repeating myself. 
raspberry pink. That's another one of those put a smile on your face colours, isn't it? And again at £3.49. That's a lot of fabric you're getting for £3.49. That's such good value. And again, it's quality. It's, this isn't a see-through fabric. I have said before when we've brought you fabrics that some of them may need um, some stabiliser on the back just to give them a little bit more substance. Don't think you're going to need it with that. Certainly not because it's got a loose weave and you can see through it. <clears throat> Marine, we are calling this one. And again, it's £3.49 your price. And then finally, we have sunshine. I have to make a point of making all of these nice and neat and folded because after we've finished at 11 o'clock, sometimes me and Kat, sometimes she beats me to it, I sit there with a whole list of things and put them all back in the packaging so it just makes it easy when we're neat, doesn't it? Because there's only the two of us here today, so normally we'd have a, a full crew, there might be three, <laughs> but we don't have any floor staff, we don't have any office staff, so. But we're here. And we're live and we're still going. And it's so nice to have your company this morning. I, to be honest, I expected a quiet day. Um, I've got a couple of hours journey before I come into work today. And uh, do you know, if I spotted 10 cars on the road, because there weren't any, no, I, there were a couple of lorries, there weren't very many, but motorways, everything, absolutely clear. And I just thought, oh, nobody's going to be around today. I know you shouldn't be on the roads and around, but you know, I just thought we're going to be really quiet. It's Easter. You're going to be really busy if you're with your families. Um, hopefully, if you're not with your families, you can, you can Skype or get in touch on social media and contact them you're going to be scoffing easter eggs and nobody's going to be watching shopping telly and you are so thank you very much it's it's nice that you're there with us um Jeanette's with us hi Jeanette and she says she's oh sitting in the garden watching us happy easter to all at sewing street happy easter to you too thank you um she has sent in a picture of a cafetiere of coffee oh I'd love a cafetiere of coffee right now I do love a coffee <laughs> Um, oh, it has really, really busy today, really busy. Um, Pam says, morning Debbie, just a bit of useless information. I love useless information. Um, the rainbow colours, the way I remember them, is V-I-B-G-Y-O-R, said like Vibgior, Vibgior, Vibgior. Vib Dior, which is violet, indigo, blue, green, yellow, orange and red. The rainbow materials would mix to make a lovely rainbow. Happy Easter, Pam. Thank you, Pam. I, I love a bit of nonsense. If you've got any nonsense, then, then come and let me know. The, you know, the kind of things that you, you get in pub quizzes. I love a bit of stuff like that. Um, OK, we have more fabrics um, coming up in the next hour. We're going to be talking about English paper piecing. And Sally Ann Harrison has very kindly made a video for us, which we're going to play, where she's demonstrating how to use some of our panels. So I shall see you again in about three or four minutes' time. Hello there, I'm Debbie Shaw and I would love you to join me on the first Monday of every single month for Sewing Street Surgery. Now this is a dedicated hour where I answer your questions and that could be questions about techniques, it could be questions about tools, it could be questions about new products or maybe something that you've seen that you just don't understand. There's a lot of questions about tensions on sewing machines and there's a lot of questions about working with different weights of fabrics. So if you have a question that you'd like to ask me, the easiest way to bring a question over to us is to go to our Facebook page and post your question on there. I will collate all of those questions throughout the week. If we need any new products for you or if we need any new demonstrations, those will all be worked on leading up to that first Monday of the month. So do join me, Debbie Shaw, on Sewing Street Surgery on the first Monday. Hello and welcome. We love hearing from you and we really hope that you can follow us on our social media platforms. We've got Instagram, which is at Sewing Street. Uh, we have Facebook. We've got two Facebook pages. One is the Sewing Street TV page and the other one is Sewing Street Fans. All three of these are monitored all the time by our t wonderful team. And if you want to message us on air, Drop us a line on either of those three and we'll definitely be able to answer your questions that you may have. If you post on the actual wall, we can perhaps answer there. Otherwise, message us as well. That works really, really well. Thank you so much for being involved. And it's only because of this community that we're able to bring you all these different diverse products and to be able to answer your questions that you may have. 
Another way you can stay in touch with us is by signing up to our newsletter. These newsletters are sent out to you very regularly and they include not only our guest profiles of upcoming guests, but also amazing uh, shows that we've got coming up for you. And if you want to look at the amazing products before everybody else, that's the best way to do it. If you'd like to sign up and you haven't already, the link to follow is www.sewingstreet.com forward slash sign up. You won't regret it. Thank you. Hi, I'm Debbie Shaw from Sewing Street and these are my five top tips for successful sewing. So number one, always use a good quality thread. A good quality thread will keep your seam stronger and also help to prevent lint building up inside your sewing machine. Tip number two, if your project isn't going quite according to plan, put it down, walk away from it, come back again the next day and you'll probably find that things don't seem half as bad as they did. My tip number three, never throw away your sewing machine manual, always keep it to hand because you're going to find hints and tips, techniques and troubleshooting in that manual. You'll miss it if you lose it. My tip number four is to read your pattern instructions before you even cut out your fabric. Different manufacturers of patterns will give you different instructions, different ways of constructing your garments and different seam allowances. So to have a successful garment, you need to follow the instructions precisely. And then tip number five is don't give up. Every professional sewer sewed their first seam. Every professional quilter quilted their first quilt. Every professional quilter sewed their first line of wonky stitches and had to get out the quick and pick. That's no different to you. So I hope you find these useful. If you want more hints and tips, then why not go to Sewing Street on Channel 74 on Freeview, on Sky 670, and of course we have a YouTube channel where you can catch up on previous demonstrations. We'll see you soon. Hi, I'm John Cole Morgan and I'm here to give you my top tips on how I go about enjoying my sewing experience. My first top tip, as everybody knows, rotary cutter safety. If you're not using it and it's not on the mat, that blade must be locked. Please be safe. My second top tip is always buy more fabric than you need. If you don't have it, it's always going to sell out. You're going to struggle to find it and when you do, it's going to cost you a lot more than when you were going to buy it originally. So buy it all. You always regret the bit you didn't buy. My next tip is Positive or negative, always listen to the advice and opinions of other people. Even if you ignore them, everybody has a different perspective, everybody has a different take on things, and it might help you along the way. The next top tip I have is always buy the most expensive and the most useful and the most practical for your brain product that works for you. Some people prefer different things, buy what works for you. And my last tip is, this is fun, this is enjoyable, and make sure you are enjoying it. Because there's nothing worse than carrying on with something and hating it and not enjoying it. You need to make sure that you're having fun. Those are my top tips and how it is that I enjoy my sewing experience. I hope they help you, because they have helped me. For more handy tips and demonstrations, make sure you watch us on our Freeview channel 74, Sky channel of 670, otherwise follow us on YouTube on Sewing Street, where you can catch up on past demonstrations and shows. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Hello, good morning, welcome back to Sewing Street. My name is Debbie Shaw and a happy Easter Sunday to you. In this show we're going to be looking at um, English paper piecing. Made easy for you because the bundles that we put together will allow you to create the two cushion covers that we have here and there's a plain backing as well. And we're giving you the paper pieces which are reusable and this huge sheet which is also a pattern for what you're going to make. Um, my top tip, and uh, I don't know if Sally Ann's going to say this in her video as well, I'd number these on the back so I know exactly which position they're going to go in. Then you can cut them all out in one go and then start one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, until you get to the size that you want all together. Of course, they don't have to make up the cushion cover. If you wanted to make smaller projects with them instead, you can do. Um, but look at... The colours, for a start, these are so fun. Um, but we're making it really easy for you as well. There is um, 
a large white border around each one so you don't have to be 100% accurate when you're cutting those out. Because you have the, um, the paper pieces already included, it's the paper pieces that determine the size, not the way that you're cutting. So if your cutting's not very good and you get a little bit wavy, it really doesn't matter. Now on the second side here, and this is the cushion over this side, um, on the back You've got a plain spotty back, but we've also got some applique pieces as well, um, which you can use on other projects. Now, you know what I, what I would do, personally? Um, I would make up my cushion cover front and then put a plain back on. Or, if you've got the orange fabric from the previous show, maybe use that as a backing. And then I would make a second cushion cover out of this one and just add the hexagons as a plique. Let me show you the back of this one too. So that's just got the plain back. That needs a zip. Just got a plain back on there. But that again is the front. So Sally Ann hasn't actually used any of the other hexagons, so that could be on a different project. Um, but I'm kind of thinking if you cut those out and applique them onto the back, then you've got the same style. You've got a matching cushion cover um, but that's going to be a lot quicker to do as well because you don't have to English paper piece those. These are two inches wide if you did want to. No, they're not, are they? they yes, they are. Uh, two, inch, two inch hexagons. So if you've got one and, one and a half inch hexagon papers, you could English paper piece those as well uh, if you wanted to. And you've even got some handmade labels too. So they're quite nice to put on the back of a cushion that maybe you're going to give, give it as a gift to somebody. If you have some um, permanent ink in your pen, you could, um, you could write a little message on there as well. That would make a lovely gift. But the thing that I love about EPP is it's time consuming and you, can, you, get, you get lost in it. It takes your mind off things. You do have to concentrate, not, you know, not a lot, but trying to get those stitches to be really, really tiny and tight and close together. And it's so exciting when you start to see the designs growing. And with hexagons, I found that when you first start, it grows really quickly because two hexagons is twice the size of one. And then the bigger it gets, it does seem to take a little bit more time. But that's why I like the size of a cushion cover particularly if you're new to English paper piecing because you're going to see a finished result certainly quicker than if you were making a bed quilt out of it um, so really simple to create it doesn't come with instructions um, but Sally Ann's going to explain to you shortly how she her version of how she puts everything together um, and what English paper piecing actually is but I just find it's one of those really therapeutic crafts you don't need a sewing machine so if you're if you're new to sewing, you think, I think I'd like to do something with fabric, but I can't afford a sewing machine. Then this is a great way of getting started. You may need a sewing machine to make up the cushion cover. Could be done by hand, a little bit time consuming. But there again, if you've got time on your hands. But isn't it just such a lovely design? Wellies and flowers and bumblebees and spots and dots and oh, the houses, June showers, calling this one. I wish the days did look like that when it's showery. Um, so there's the panel and two bags of English paper pieces included as well and as I said those are reusable. This is the harbour which is this one so a little bit more of a, a classic style. Whoops there you go so that's your EPP pieces but this time the backing has a lighthouse, a lighthouse with the setting sun. And then you've got the hexagons there as well with matching motifs and your handmade labels too. That's all for £19.99. pence. There's 200 pieces there in total. Actually, if you've gone for any of these panels before, look, they match. I'll show those later on. So you can have a whole coordinating room so lots to keep you occupied there. And you know, it's something that the whole family can do as well. You could all get involved in that. So one of you gluing and sticking, one of you arranging, one of you sewing together. I wouldn't let anybody else join in with my sewing though. Because everyone's stitches tend to be different, don't they? <laughs> and you've got these as well. I would suggest that when you go for these, you go for these, 
because you've got 200 pieces all together that you're going to need to wrap around pieces of card. If you're doing that by hand, that is going to take you such a long time, which is why we've got blue, blue, blue pens, glue pens. That's why they've been invented, um, to make your life easier. The £10.98, this is our early bird. Not a lot of stock left now. A lot of you have been multi-ordering these as well. Well done, you are going to get so much use out of these. So when you're gluing your pieces, this is what they're going to look like. Traditionally, you'd be tacking that by hand. The glue is simple to remove because your pieces are going to come away afterwards. Um, if it is a little bit sticky, then put a warm iron over the back of it and it melts the glue. And then you can simply take the paper pieces out and those are reusable. So you can use those all over again. So that's, that's why you need your glue pen if you're going to go for these. Unless you want to sit and hand tack every single one of them. And on a hexagon, you've got six tacking points that you need to make on every one of those 200 pieces. Now, Sally Ann has been um, very kind to make us a, a video from home. Um, she's been making up the cushion covers, she's been EPPing, and we've got a video for, of her explaining how she does it and what she's come up with. So, take a look at this. Hi, I'm Sally Ann Harrison, and today I will be demonstrating English paper piecing, which is also known as EPP, in two cushions. First one is this one in an orange yellow sort of floral design. The second one is this one which is you know nautical design with a cute little lighthouse on the back. We'll be looking at um, paper piecing over hexagons um, by hand. Um, looking forward to it. This is an English paper piece cushion with a, a lovely, it's made of hexagons, it's got a rosette centre and it's built out from there. The reverse of the cushion is just a plain spotted back. So the idea is that you make the EPP piece, you build it out with all the hexagons, and then you add the back on, sew around the edge, slip in your the, the pillow form, and then you just slip stitch the edge closed. So that's one of the cushions in a floral design. The other cushion has a nautical theme. Again, it's built around a central rosette using hexagons. So you'd build the entire front and the back. It's got quite a cute lighthouse on the back, part of the, the nautical theme. And again, you'd make the front using the hexagons, attach the back, sew around the edge, pop in your pillow form, and then slip stitch the edge closed. So you can see where we start with this sort of thing. So English paper piecing is a technique that's been around for centuries and some of the best quilts out there, especially quilts in museums, etc., use hexagons, which are all sewn together in different designs. You can get grandmother's flower garden. Um, I think there's another one, something relating to paths, lots of different designs that you can make with just hexagons. We're going to make hexagons like like this, which is the centre rosette, and we're going to build out from the middle. The entire design is um, hexagons of fabric, which are then wrapped around hexagons of paper and then sewn together. Now, when you get your panel, one of the first things you're going to do is want to cut out all the hexagons. I'll just use an ordinary pair of scissors and cut a few out. I cut mine actually slightly larger than the edge, can you see? And I found that gave me quite a little bit then to turn over the paper. I didn't want to cut them. Cutting them right on the edge seemed a little bit too small. So I just left a little bit on the outside edge. So just cutting them out just a little bit. So I've got just a little bit of white showing around the edge. The other thing that I also found is that um, there's quite a bit of starch in the fabric and I decided, I did, I, I actually wrapped a few of them but afterwards I decided probably a bit better if I actually gave the panel a wash and so these ones are, have actually been washed. Okay, so 
in true Blue Peter fashion. Here's some that I cut out earlier. So let's talk about different ways of basting. There's a couple of different ways to baste. You can thread baste using a tacking stitch or you can glue baste. So here are the paper pieces and these have got one inch sides. So if we start off with the first one, I'm going to show you how I glue baste. So you're going to place your hexagon in the center and then what I recommend is a sew line glue pen if you can see, so it's a sew line product. It actually winds up from the base, and although the glue comes out blue, it will dry clear. And what you would do is you would just run it along the edge of your hexagon sides. So I'm just putting a little bit of glue all the way around. And then you'll fold over the edge. So I'm just working my way around the edge like that. I'm pressing it quite firmly in place. And I might put a little extra on that one. Press that down. And there you have your first hexagon. If you wanted to tack it instead using just ordinary tacking thread, so I've got just some ordinary tacking thread with a big knot in the end, so I'm just going to place the knot in the end. If you're going to base thread base, one of the things you might like to do is to keep it in position make a, put a little hole in the middle and a pin through it. So I'll just show you, I've just got this. I'm just gonna take it and place a little hole in the middle of the piece, then put it in the middle of the shape and put a little pin through it and then it stops it moving around then you're ready to thread baste. So you would just turn over the edge. So, like so. so I'm going to do a large stitch across and then into that corner. So the corners are going to be the key areas. So you want to come up and down in that corner and then move along to the next one. So again, I'm big stitch into the corner, back down. You can see how that pin's now working to stop the whole thing moving around. Fold it over. Big stitch, just a tiny stitch to hold that corner. I push the pin just slightly out of the way, fold over the corner, big stitch into the corner, and then the final one, let's just give it a little press on the mat. So finger pressing it as you go along helps get it the right final one. Go back up through. So there's your thread based hexagon. I'm just gonna remove the pin. So there's the two together. It's entirely up to you how you decide to, to baste. Um, some, people, some people really don't like the glue. Um, glue is a little bit more difficult to get off. And some people like to just, I mean, by 
if you thread base, then what you're basically doing is you can do it on your lap in the lounge in front of the TV, whereas the glue basting requires a, a hard surface to actually adhere the glue. And as I said previously, the glue is a little bit more tricky to get out and the threads are quite easy because you're just going to pull the thread and the whole lot's going to come out once you've sewn your hexagons together. So that's basting your hexagons. So in this segment, I'm going to start actually sewing them together. To do that, I need a couple more hexagons, so I'm quickly going to glue a few, which is my favourite method, um, and it helps us recap. So, I find that I can do this quite quickly. And this this time, look, instead of going round, I've actually opted to go across. So do one side and then the other. I don't think that there is. Uh, a right way and a wrong way, it's just so that you just get a nice crisp edge. After you've made them, there's also a chance that you might want to put an iron on them, give them an iron, that helps as well, keep the edges nice and crisp. going to use some of my favourite thread which is the, the bottom line thread I talked about earlier and that really fine needle so I've threaded the needle so I'm going to tie it on like I talked, I talked about that earlier, I said I would tie the needle on, stop it slipping off because it's so annoying if you, as, as you go along, it keeps on slipping out of the eye. So, okay, it's a very fine needle. So this is my center. And these are the ones, these are the two that I've glue basted. And that's the third one that I've thread basted. So let's start off by getting the right sides together. Now I would put a bit of a knot in the, in the beginning, so I'm just going to ruffle it up a bit to try and get a little bit of a knot going. There we go. Feel it. Just there. So as I say, right sides together. And you also need to think about if you're using a stripe, which way you're using the stripes. So my stripes are going to go parallel with my, let's go back a bit. My stripes are going to go parallel with the edge. Think about which way the, you want the stripes to go, whether they want them to go down. Okay, something to bear in mind. Right. So I'm going to hold, get them together. One of the things I'm going to help hold them together is I'm going to use a clip. So like these clover clips. So I'm just going to clip the two together. And then we're going to go right into the very edge of the pieces. So through that one, I'm just going to take the very edge. So I'm taking a little bit, a little bite from each side. It's probably a bit of a big bite that one, but the idea is you take a couple of threads. I don't know if I can a little bite from each side. You work your way along. So the stitches are probably about an eighth of an inch apart. So quite close. So 
and this is called a whip stitch. I have, I, I'm fully aware that you can do it flat, but I haven't actually, in which case you put the two pieces together on a flat surface and work your way along. I have tried that sort of way, and I've also tried doing it with a, a ladder stitch. Um, but that wasn't as strong as doing it this way with just an ordinary over and over whip stitch. I'm going to take that off, that's done its job, and work my way to the end. So I'm getting close to the corner now. And when I get to the corner at the end of the line, Again, I'm going to put in another one of those locking stitches. So I've got my loop going through the loop, through this way, and locking it at the corner. If I turn it over, you can see, you can see the stitches, and it's joined together. So then I get hold of the next one. I don't think there is a right or wrong way of assembling this. I tend to assemble all of the six hexagons around the rosette to start off with, then I go back in and sew them together to each other. Okay, so this is the next one. So again, probably help if I use a clip to stop it moving around. So I'm going into the next one. Okay, moving on with some other sort of tips and tricks, thread that you would use for hand sewing. Don't make your pieces of thread too long, generally about up to your elbow from your hand is a good size piece. So, what's that? Right, 17 inches. So keep them relatively short to prevent sort of tangling. The other thing you can do is use something called Thread Heaven. So it's a little thread conditioner. I'm not sure what it's made of. Um, sometimes you can, you can also use beeswax in the same way. So if you open it up, it's like a little pot of wax. And then all you do with the threads is you would run your thread oops, I'm stay down, along and that will be just enough. And the, the idea behind the thread heaven is it stops your, um, your thread sort of binding back on itself and producing knots as you go along because the, your, the stitches are going to be really small and close together and there's a, a tendency for threads to tangle. So that's the, the thread heaven tip. Going back to the floral cushion, cushion number one. So we've I've sewn, you saw me sewing on the nautical one all the way, started to sew all the way around the inner edge. Once that was complete, what I would then do is go along these edges towards the middle, which is what I've done with this one that I've prepared. The other top tip for doing that is I would sew from here to the end and then a couple of stitches backwards um, and then cut the thread off. So from here to the end and a couple of stitches backwards. I would also do a securing stitch at the end and at the start each time. And there, so I'd do them right at the very pinpoint corner and then I'd sew back on myself and do another one and cut the thread there. I wouldn't cut the thread at the end because I've had it instances before where it started to come apart on that sort of pivot point. So the next step would be to put in the next round of rosettes, which will go around the edge like this. So again, you might want to think about how your stripes are going to play out in this round. Just pop them in position so you can see where I'm going with this. So 
So that would be the next round that you need to put in position. So again, I would go in and I would pop that one on there. And I would sew along that point. Okay. I'd sew along here to make the join. And once that one was joined, I would sew along here to put the next one in. Now, as you can see, move these that way. So that one's going to be to that one. This one is going to go on here, this side, and then you're going to need to sew around there. Now, as the, as it begins to get bigger, it will begin to get bulkier in your hands. And the rule of thumb here is that you can start to take the papers out of all the ones where you have completely sewn around the edge. So once this one has that one in the corner, so you could take this one out, for instance, and you could take this one out, and that makes it much easier to hold in your hands. So let's turn it over and have a look at the papers. So this is, if you remember, this is the glue-based version, completely glued. I'll give you some idea of what it's like to take the papers out. So I'm just going to lift, because people sometimes worry, about, oh, I won't be able to get the papers out. It's going to be a problem. This is what taking the papers out looks like. Again, it's in front of the TV job. Can you see? I'm just loosening it all the way around the edge and then you just remove the paper. And then what you would do is just nudge this back into the position that it came from. And then if I'd sewn the orange ones on the outside edge, the next one would be that one to come out. And again, I'll just give you, I know that people stress and think, oh, if I glue based, I'm never gonna get the papers out. They come out quite readily. And again, you're just gonna nudge it back into position. So that would be your next step. So you carry on with the orange round and the next round until you've actually built all the edges of your front of your cushion. Okay, this part of the video looks at finishing it off the cushion. So if we go back to the floral version, so you've done the centre rosette, you've done the orange stripes, and you've worked your way all the way out, and you've squared off your cushion. So here is my much smaller working sample. So the cushion that you just looked at wasn't actually quilted but you could quilt the front and English paper piecing, particularly hexagons like this, do look, look really nice um, quilted. So if you wanted to, all you would need to do is put some, is make a quilt sandwich using your hexagon piece top, a piece of quilt batting. And a point to, um, to remember is that quilt batting, this is a cotton piece, does have a front and a back is something that people don't tend to know. So the slightly fluffier side is always the front and is the piece that you want to put under your piece to top. And the flatter back would just go against the cotton. So I would put my piece cushion top on top of here and then I would quilt it. Now you could either hand quilt it or you could machine quilt it. Hand quilting does look particularly nice. And if you want to do something traditional, what you would do is um, probably about hand quilt it about a quarter of an inch in all the way around the edge of each hexagon um, and it does look really really nice if you wanted to machine quilt it you could machine quilt it in the ditch all the way around that would be another method making the back the back on the nautical one has a lighthouse on it so you, you the only way of putting the back on is to actually do it so that the cushion fills from the side. So you just leave an opening in the side of the cushion to put the, the cushion back in. 
the other one the this floral version you could possibly add a little bit extra and do um, an envelope back i'm sally ann harrison from sewing street thank you very much for watching i hope that you enjoy your english paper piecing and that your cushion comes out beautiful Um, it could be um, again. Welcome back. We got stuck. You got stuck on Sally Ann's hands there for a bit. I just want to say thank you, Jeanette, for sending over her picture of her cafeteria and coffee because you set me off, so I've had to go and make myself one, which is not the reason why you were stuck on there while I went out and made a cup of coffee. So sorry about that, but at least you got a good old look at the prints on that English paper piece thing. So I'll give you a reminder. Oh, early bird, um, the glue pen, refills are about to sell out on their own. Nip over to the website quickly as you can, sewingstreet.com, check out of your baskets or order the refills now if you need them. If you wanted to go for the early bird, we still do have a few left and that brings you your pen and the refill with the pen and the extra six refills as well and that's only £10.99. But this isn't an early bird that's going to last the rest of the day. So if you want to get hold of that, certainly if you're getting any of these EPP panels, you need to get hold of your pen because as you saw with Sally Ann it makes it so much quicker and so much easier when you're gluing your fabric around your papers. Now for £19.99 look at what you're getting. So this is the full panel, this is the one that Sally Ann was using. It's called June Showers but I like the colours on this, I don't think they're showery kind of colours. Oranges, pale teals, lemons and teal spots, really easy to cut out. You don't have to be 100% accurate with these because it's the shape of the EPP pieces, the English paper piecing pieces, um, that depict the actual size and the shape of the hexagon. So don't worry if you're a little bit wobbly when you're cutting those out. The paper pieces are included as well. And that's your backing fabric, or the back of the cushion fabric. I'd use that as another cushion, because my thought is, okay, for the back of the cushion here, which you're probably not going to see too much, I would add 
the orange blender fabric that we saw. This is the tangerine, we called it, um, from the previous show. So I'd make the back of the panel out of this, or the cushion cover out of that, and then I would make another cushion cover out of this, which made me coffee, and uh, I would add these as applique pieces onto the front. You could EPP those, but you'd need to get hold of some bigger hexagons. But there again, you can. Um, if you like, just uh, print them off off the internet. So copy paper is going to be fine. And I'd use that for the backing again on that one. So in effect, you could make two cushion covers. Wouldn't they look stunning though? In any, any room, in a bedroom, in your living room, on the sofa, in the conservatory, on your deck chair in the garden. And they're all 100% cotton, British designed and printed in the UK as well. So your £19.99 brings you a panel with your 200 pieces and we've got two bags of the English paper piecing paper pieces and these are reusable. I don't take mine out until I've finished um, personally or maybe take the centre ones out as I'm getting towards the edge. When you do get to the edge then I like to iron everything, maybe with some best press just to make sure the creases stay there. And then as you saw with Sally, I'm very gently peel away the papers. Even if you catch the edge of the papers as you're sewing, um, you can still reuse them because you may perforate the edge of the paper. The idea is you skim across the top, but if you just perforate the edge, you can still use that because when the next fabric wraps around, it's not going to follow in the, in the needle holes. It'll just wrap around. So just be careful, don't tear them, take your time. But I think that's what English paper piecing is all about, isn't it? It's, um, I was going to say it's mindful, it's more like mindless because it just takes you away, you've got something to concentrate on um, and you do, you know, you, you can't, I, I can't sew and watch something else at the same time, I, it, I have to concentrate on what I'm doing and I love that, so it, it, the hours just go by and then you produce something that's handmade and wonderful and you've got your handmade labels on there, you should, you should put those on the back of whatever it is you're making and be proud of it. So that's your June showers. Shall we take a look at the harbour? So again, you've got your two bags of hexes. This one's a little bit different in the backing fabric. We check out ideas as a fronting fabric. So there are all your EPP pieces. Um, you could machine sew these it will take you a long time, I would imagine longer than um, hand sewing. The beauty of hand sewing these together is that that Y seam where the hexagons join is going to be perfect. I think you'd find that very difficult to do with the sewing machine, with so many pieces as well. That's the harbour backing with a lighthouse. What a shame to have that on the back. I'd make another cushion cover out of that. You could add the hexagons. I wouldn't. I'd leave that just as it is for another cushion cover. You could still use your oops, your orange on the back. That still goes well. Um, or a navy. Navy would work well. Or a cream colour. That would work really well as well. And then with the hexes, the large hexes, I'd have those. Actually, if you've got the... Um, uh, the early bird special from yesterday, the seeded cotton, that's the kind of look that would go really well with this. Or we had the, uh, the natural linen on yesterday, that would go really well with this as well. Very organic kind of look. And I'd make something like a, maybe a bolster cushion or a rectangular cushion and use those hexagon pieces as a plique. I think that would be a nice idea. I've got the um, LS720 coming up in the next hour. If you're, if you're not too good with hand sewing, but you really do like that look, I'm going to show you a little trick, because you can sew them together on the sewing machine. I'm not going to sew hexes and try and do that Y seam, but there is a way that you can sew them together if you really wanted to. Okay, so your paper pieces are included. You've got two bags of those. So is that 200 of those altogether? Yeah, 200, 200 pieces. And remember, those are reusable as well. Shall we have a look at the bits and bobs that go with it? Um, Sharon messaged in and she says, Hello, Debbie. I'm so pleased I found your channel. I hope my competition answers have reached you all. I've sent them through Messenger. Yes, we have. Now, we're going to announce the... They've gone, haven't they? Yes, 
it's all over with now. Um, we're going to announce the winner tomorrow. Um, on the show, um, Vicky's going to be with you tomorrow, so she'll announce the winner. Um, we won't be able to get back to every single person individually to let you know whether you were the winner or whether you weren't, I'm afraid. So do watch out in one of the shows tomorrow. I'm not sure what time it is. But if you don't want to watch the whole of it, remember, everything's going to be on YouTube later on as well. But the winner will be contacted. So, let's do these ones. Because these go with the harbour. So imagine, you've got your, your cushion cover. Then you can make a plain cushion cover with a fabric panel. You've got four huge fat quarters. So that picks up on the design around the outside of your EPP. So you could have another cushion with that. Or use these as the backing, actually, for those. And then you've got another cushion cover, which is uh, clamshells. And then you've got two more cushion covers on this side. <laughs> um, so you could have a whole matching room. Wouldn't that be amazing? So, is it going to be a dining room? Oh, or in the... No, you don't have cushions in the bathroom, do you? You could have cushions. You've got a chair in your bathroom. You could have cushions in the bathroom. Um, maybe... Maybe in your dining room. So, um, you've got your, your cushions. You can make some chair seat covers out of these. And then maybe join a few together and maybe put a border around the edge of your... Oh, no, we'll do another one for that one. So, that's your, your fat quarters. And then we've got another set of fat quarters. So if you went for all of those, you've got eight cushion covers, not including the one that you've EPP'd. So you can maybe do some of those little bolster-shaped cushions that go in the middle of your dining chair backs to give you a little bit of support. That would be nice. Antimacassars. So you could have... Who knew they were called those? You know the um, uh, fabrics that you have over the back of the sofa? My, dad, my mum and dad used to have them. They're one of those classic things that are making a resurgence, aren't they? Even like aprons and tea cosies. Um, my dad used to wear brill cream on his hair all the time. So my mum used to put covers over the back so he didn't get grease on the sofa. Antimacassars. So you can make matching those. Um, maybe a table runner borders around an existing tablecloth. How about large hexes? Look at those! And they're all themed the same. So you could, I mean, it would be a lovely bathroom theme, wouldn't it, these? Now, these have been laid out specifically, um, which was, I haven't, I'm taking the credit for this, which is my idea. Because when you cut out hexagons, it, with, with the EPP, it's not so important that you have to be really, really accurate. Um, but I thought if you want to be, it's, you have to cut out every single hexagon individually. So you can't use a rotary cutter roll or a mat. But with this one, you can because of the way they've been arranged. So you can cut straight across this way with your rotary cutter and then just cut the diagonals to cut your hexagons out. So it makes it a lot quicker. So that was my thought with those. So you could EPP them. You'd need one and a half inch hexagon pieces to do that. Or those are large enough to quite easily um, sew them on. So you could use a satin stitch and apply them that way. This is what I'm thinking existing tablecloths. How about just putting a border all the way around the edge with these five inch squares? I think that would make a really nice tablecloth. But you don't have to cut these up to use them. You can just use them in the strips as they are. What I have done previously is to sew the pieces together and make a pin tuck. So you still get that white border, but it's, it's a nice effect. Or you can sew them together from the back. You can just about see the pattern through and just do a quarter of an inch seam allowance and sew them like so. So they're already lined up. Your points are already going to match because they're all in one strip. Or you can just leave them as they are. In fact, um, four of those together is a perfect size for a 12-inch square cushion pad. I've done that before as well. So lots you can do with those. But I'm just thinking all the way around the edge of a tablecloth. Or the bottom of a pair of curtains. You're going to have a, a very nautical theme to your home this year. So that's those. Then we have fabric strips. So you've got 16 of these and all of the prints are different. And they're two and a half inches wide. So you could use these for, for John's Jelly Roll Race if you're going to be doing that. Which I think is next Sunday, isn't it? 
the 18th. So, yep. Have a, I'm, I'm assuming that there are details on the Facebook page all about that. But you could use these for a jelly roll race. Two and a half inches wide, but they're longer than you would expect. Normally a jelly roll or a fabric strip when you buy them is 44 inches. These are 55. So you're getting, you're getting a lot more. There's, there's a lot there. So again, 16 strips altogether. I did cover a bolster cover in one of these and did that same effect where you, where you pinch the, the white bit so it gives like a pin tuck. So you don't have to painstakingly cut every one of those out individually. You can use them as they are. I mean, that would make two full-size aprons easily. In fact, it, that's, that's almost down to my ankles. So <laughs> you could probably make more than that as well. Right. So that's that one. This hour is going so quickly. Today is going really quickly, actually, isn't it? So let me just see if there's any more Facebook messages. Oh no, are you all out in the sunshine now? Oh, these are the short I'm thinking, why have I got two of those? Um, this is exactly the same as previous, but not so many. Um, so here you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it's half the size of the previous one. So if you don't want the full sheet, you can have a half sheet. This is twelve pounds and ninety nine pence. That's colours, aren't they? So that's those. Right, really quickly. I've got the Elna Seven Twenty coming up in the next hour, um, which you have seen a few times, but it's been really popular. Um, if you want anything demonstrating particularly, have a think about it. We're going to take a break in about three or four minutes. And then come and let me know any questions that you have or anything that you want me to show you. We're going to be doing a bit of free motion embroidery and um, a corded buttonhole stitch. So come and let me know if there's anything else that you'd like to see with that machine. Four fat quarters. These are the June showers. They, I, I like the naivety of the sketches on this. They look like children's drawings. They're really, not, I love the colours there as well. So those are the first four fat quarters. Oh, and then there's another set of fat quarters, which are all rather different. It's not too neat. I'll do that later. This is the second set. And these match with the, um, with the EPP over there. And I'd still go for a plane. Every one of these is patterned. Let me just turn this around the right way, sorry. There you go. So again, I'd, I would go with a plain, whether it's a teal, a dark teal would work well with this. Um, the orange would work well. A lemon would work well. A deep red would work well. A dark brown would work. And of course, white, because you've got white in the background. That's £14.99. And again, they're bigger than you'd expect to find for a fat quarter because the width of the fabric is bigger than an average width of fabric for those. And we've got the hexagons, the large hexagons. Oh, that's wide. Uh, 55 inches wide. Use them as applique, use them for English paper piecing. That's entirely up to you. Um, and that's 12 pounds and 99 pence for all of those. Then we have the five inch squares again. You've seen this before, so I know a lot of you have already started making things with them. I'd love to know what you're doing. Um, those are the five inch squares. So a typical size of a charm pack. And there's 40 of those all together. But I don't think you'll be getting a charm pack for £9.99 with 40 pieces in them. So 20 designs, two of each of the same. 20 does two of each of the same. I can see more than two of each of the same. Two. Anyway, there's 40 of those all together. You take a look when you get home. And finally are the, I shan't open them all the way out. It's quite a workout. There you go. So twice the length of those. These are all different. Um, you've got 16 strips in total. 
And again, unless you are um, a patchworker, you don't really have to cut every single strip out individually. You could just use that as one large sheet of, uh, of fabric. And again, that's £19.99 if you want to order those. There's an awful lot to go through there, so if you have a look again on the website on um, sewingstreet.com, it will be able to, you'll be able to take a look at everything that we that we've just shown you. Um, the, the cushion panels have been really popular. We were checking out your baskets on those before we'd even shown them to you. So it's, it's nice to be able to shop on the website and get ahead, isn't it? So this is the cushion panel that goes with the, the June showers selection. Now this is the one that Sally Ann was demonstrating um, in her video. If you just joined us and you missed that, have a look on YouTube later on today. And uh, hopefully it'll be there later on today. It is a bank holiday, but I think Hayley's going to be busy um, still working with the, with the, with the um, YouTube site. If not, it might be there tomorrow. There are 200 hexes included, so your paper pieces, you've got two bags of these, your paper pieces are included as well. So all you need is a pair of scissors, a needle and thread, and your early bird, which is your glue pen. You get a lot of fabric for your money there, don't you? All exclusive to Sewing Street as well, so you can't get hold of these anywhere else, or just for you. Um, the second one is the Harbour. And... I've never been so exhausted standing still. So those are your hexes, maybe you've got 200 hexagon shapes included as well. I love the back of that. I just, <laughs> our camera operators just panning across and going up and zooming in and zooming out. We're multitasking here at Sewing Street. I, I'm, I'm in charge of presenting in tea, but Kat who's here today doesn't drink tea, so she hasn't got anything. So, and, and we're both responsible for the, for the folding up and the putting away and the getting out of the next one and the putting of that away as well. And uh, we've got Hannah at home who's responsible for producing and Hayley at home who's responsible for our social media. Oh, and then Joe director is at home supervising. He thinks. We do what we want. So that, uh, the back panel, I just think it's a waste to have that on the back of a cushion cover. I think that would look so nice as a cushion cover in its own right, or even a picture, you know, just that in a wall hanging um, or in a frame, I think would look lovely. And then you've got all of those little hexagons as well. And your handmade labels in the bottom as well. All for £19.99. And pence. Um, Dawn's messaged in and uh, no, I haven't got Dawn. She says, morning, Debbie. Happy Easter. Happy Easter to you too, Don. Thank you. Uh, what The best way to spend a lion on Easter Sunday? Oh, with Debbie on Sewing Street. Thank you. I don't remember a lion. I get up at half past three to come here in the morning. I should be so pleased when it's light in the morning. So doesn't it make a difference? Don't like, don't like getting up in the dark. Dog gets confused. What's going on with the dog? Okay. Take a look on the website, everything that we've got for you in the show. Coming up in the next hour, we have the Elna 720. Um, it's my favourite sewing machines out of all the sewing machines that we bring you because it's the next one on. Um, the upgrade, if you like, from the machine that I use at home, which is a, a Janome um, 6600. So the, this has got more features than my sewing machine, but it's still got all of the features for the reason that I bought mine in the first place. So I'm, I, I love bringing you this machine. Um, so stay with us. And again, if you've got any questions, you want to come through and ask them. If you want anything particular explaining or demonstrating about the machine, then just come and let me know. So go to the Facebook page. It's Facebook TV. No, it's not. It's Sewing Street TV on Facebook. And um, yeah, and send us a message there. Not the fans one, I'm not on the fans one, I'm on, I'm on the other one. And your messages will come through so we can act immediately and answer your questions there. <laughs> so we're going to take a quick break while we get the machines up and we get ready for the next hour. Looking forward to seeing you in about five minutes.
Hi, I'm Debbie Shaw from Sewing Street and these are my five top tips for successful sewing. So number one, always use a good quality thread. A good quality thread will keep your seams stronger and also help to prevent lint building up inside your sewing machine. Tip number two, if your project isn't going quite according to plan, put it down, walk away from it, come back again the next day and you'll probably find that things don't seem half as bad as they did. My tip number three, never throw away your sewing machine manual, always keep it to hand because you're going to find hints and tips, techniques and troubleshooting in that manual. You'll miss it if you lose it. My tip number four is to read your pattern instructions before you even cut out your fabric. Different manufacturers of patterns will give you different instructions, different ways of constructing your garments and different seam allowances. So to have a successful garment, you need to follow the instructions precisely. And then tip number five is don't give up. Every professional sewer sewed their first seam. Every professional quilter quilted their first quilt. Every professional quilter sewed their first line of wonky stitches and had to get out the quick and pick. That's no different to you. So I hope you find these useful. If you want more hints and tips, then why not go to Sewing Street on Channel 74 on Freeview, on Sky 670, and of course we have a YouTube channel where you can catch up on previous demonstrations. We'll see you soon. Hi, I'm John Cole Morgan, and I'm here to show you what we need to get ready for our sew along on the 18th of April. You're gonna see a hyperlapse video of me doing really, really quick work on how to make this wonderful quilt to get you ready if you'd like to sew along with us and what you need to do. So the first thing you're going to do, either using a pair of scissors or a rotary cutter, whichever you feel more comfortable with, you're gonna separate all 48 of your different strips, being the uh, sunrise, sunset, the azure and the berry, break those all up and keep them in order from dark to light in each colorway. In the way that I did the quilt for the show, I had dark berry to light berry, and then I decided to go light blue to dark blue, and then the dark sunset to the light sunset. So now you would have taken your design rolls and you would have cut them all into these amazing strips that go from light to dark. I piled them up in half going from light to dark as I cut them off the roll. So I have the, the berry one, uh, no this is the sunset one, I have the azure and I have the berry one. That's the sunset, the azure and the berry one. So what I'm doing now is I've decided that these ones are quite close together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do these ones from light to dark, but I'm going to turn these round and do dark to light. So what I'm going to join, do is take one from that pile, one from that pile, one from that pile, then one from that pile, one from that pile, one from that pile, and just go in order and sew them all together. So these are, when I say sew them together, these are going to be the short ends here. So that will be sewn together to one of these. This will be sewn to one of those, those will be one of the, on the short end. Once you've separated your blocks and you've decided that you're going to now stitch these all together, you're going to take the short ends of your strips and you're going to sew those together. The way I decided to do it was I went from orange, blue, berry, and I kept that order going. So you had a dark orange, light blue, dark berry, and decreasing all the way around until you had a light orange, dark blue, light berry. Once you've now sewn your short ends together and you have a 1700 odd inch piece of fabric, you're gonna take one side and you're gonna cut 20 to 30 inches off one side of this fabric long strip. Reason being is that if you don't, you're not gonna have any movement of the fabric throughout the quilt and it will just be the same as sewing the whole grid together and that isn't gonna be what we need. Once you've done that, you're gonna take the two raw edges of your fabric, which aren't sewn together, put them right sides together and you're gonna sew along one side of the fabric. Fabric. So after you've done all of that, you're going to come to the end and there will always be a kink, a curve, a wobble, don't worry. Literally fold in half as close as you can get it to half and cut it. I know everybody just freaked out a little bit, but I promise you it doesn't matter. Because what you're going to do now is you're going to sew this off to get to the very end. You just fold those to the edge there and you sew to the end. At this point, you're now going to take your rotary cutter and your ruler and you're going to square the edge of your, of your 
um, pieces off. This is how far you'll need to get to be able to join me in the sew along and sew along with me on the 18th at about 9, 9.30. So please, any questions, drop me a line on social media and thank you so much for your time. Look forward to seeing you on the 18th. Hello there, I'm Debbie Shaw and I would love you to join me on the first Monday of every single month for Sewing Street Surgery. Now this is a dedicated hour where I answer your questions and that could be questions about techniques, it could be questions about tools, it could be questions about new products or maybe something that you've seen that you just don't understand. There's a lot of questions about tensions on sewing machines and there's a lot of questions about working with different weights of fabrics. So if you have a question that you'd like to ask me, the easiest way to to bring a question over to us is to go to our Facebook page and post your question on there. I will collate all of those questions throughout the week. If we need any new products for you or if we need any new demonstrations, those will all be worked on leading up to that first Monday of the month. So do join me, Debbie Shaw, on Sewing Street Surgery on the first Monday. Hi there, welcome back to Sewing Street. My name is Debbie Shaw. Thank you so much for all your messages this Easter Sunday. We've, I think we've had more messages today than I've ever had in a show since we've been going. And it's, it's so nice to hear from you. It's nice to know that you're there and it's nice to know that you're supporting Sewing Street as well. So thank you so much for those. And Sue, thank you for your message you've just sent through. Um, I'm, I'm glad we're keeping you busy on a Sunday morning. Um, so, right, so I'm, I'm still organising. Today's going so quickly. So we're not looking very neat. This is the Elna 720 sewing machine. I love this machine. It's absolutely feature packed. You've got a couple of hundred stitches on here. Um, it's ever so simple to use and as I was saying previously this is the, the model that's the next stage on from the machine that I've got. So it's got many more features but I'll tell you the reason I bought my machine in the first place and I do buy my sewing machines. I don't like to be associated with a particular brand and if you if you become an ambassador for somebody then you, you have to promote everything that they use and nothing else so I like to choose the companies that I work with and I choose to work with Elna Janome same company um, so I've paid more than this for my machine oh, that's by the way but I bought mine because when I found up the dealer I said to him I want a really quick machine and I do a lot of bag making so I want a machine that will sew through lots of layers of fabric I want a tough machine that'll coat with thicker fabrics and he recommended the the Janome that I've got the base of it is cast. It's really solid. I have problems lifting it up, it's so heavy. And that's a really good thing because that's, it gives the machine power, it gives the machine stability, and when you're sewing at speed with it, it doesn't shake around all over the table. It's got a huge extension table, which is too big for this table, but I can just show you the size of that here, and that simply slips over the front. So it's perfect if you're quilting, if you're free motion embroidering, if you're dressmaking, if you need the support of fabric like curtains on the side, that is huge. I don't use it all of the time, um, because I do a lot of um, filming for what I'm making. I'm on quite a small table while I do that. Um, just as easy, obviously, to use without it. But it's nice to have this as an option. If you have the space to, leave, to have the machine set up all the time, I'd certainly leave the extension table on there as well. So that's really useful. Comes in loads of feet. There are loads more available if you need them. It does have a semi-soft cover. Not a fan of those clear plastic ones. And to be honest... I think I'd make myself a nice fabric padded one. But it does have a dust cover as well, so that's that. You have your full instructions included, of course. You have a two year warranty from Elna. There's a support line with Elna as well. You've got the knee lifter, I'll show you how that works later on. And you've got loads of feet, but I won't show you the stitches. These aren't all of them. I was just having a play when I first took this home a few weeks ago. And there's some really different, some really unusual stitches on here as well. Um, like, because a lot of the time with, with machines that have decorative stitches, you see the same stitch over and over again, even on different brands of machines. But here, we've got a washing line. That was the first one I stitched out, and it's got little pegs and everything. I, I love that. I just think that's so sweet. You know, if you're making a peg bag, if you're making anything for your kitchen, just a little border of a washing line around it. I, I love that. Um, this one is one I haven't seen before as well. 
and that could do some crazy stippling on a small quilt. I love that design, I think it's really classy. Stars I haven't seen before, Hearts and Vines is a new one to me, this is a new one to me, this is one that I'll use a lot. I love the mannequin and you can stitch them out individually as well. So obviously these are kind of sideways in a row but if you wanted them upright you just turn your fabric around and you can stitch those individually. The stitch stitch is a whole stitch. So although you've got a program and you could a memory in here, that is one stitch that you can choose. So I I haven't put together five letters in a row, that, that's the actual stitch. Rows of cats, beautiful borders, handmade is one complete stitch as well. These can stitch in rows or you can program them to just stitch one at a time. So lots of sewing themes. Then we've got leaves and vines. There are loads of satin stitches on the machine as well. I just didn't have time to stitch them all out, but then I had a play. You have the alphabet, so you can monogram. Um, you can join together different stitches. You can mirror image them. So for instance, the, uh, the needle here is mirror imaged. Um, this is a mirror image of a scallop stitch. And that's just playing around with some of the different stitches. You can extend the stitches as well. That'd be very difficult to do freehand, wouldn't it? Um, oh, sweet is one of the stitches as well. That's a, that's a complete stitch. So you can free motion embroidery, get a free motion embroidery foot and an adjustable one. So you could do that by hand if there's a specific word that you like, but that's one of the actual stitches. And then you can extend stitches. So there's your scallop stitch, but you can ascend it by times five and make a really wide stitch, but the machine fills in the gaps. So it doesn't take that size stitch and stretch it so you get a big zigzag. It actually adds extra stitches to fill in the gaps. So you can trim right up against this and that can make a nice edge around a napkin or a tablecloth or something like that. Shall we have a look at the feet while we're here as well? I got, I got quite excited. This was like Easter to me because it's like having a box of chocolates. So in here, we have... Oh, look, you can tell I've used this. <laughs> <laughs> we have a buttonhole foot. It does have an extra plate here to go through thick fabric. So if you're putting buttonholes in a coat, that can help to stabilize the fabric so it's not going to twist. Or if you've got a very loose weave fabric, it helps there as well. You have a walking foot, that's included too. You have a free motion embroidery foot, that's the standard one. But we've also added an adjustable free motion foot. The closed toe will be on it when you get it home. There's also an open toe foot and you have a clear foot. And this has quarter inch markings on it. So that makes it easier if you're echo quilting. And because it's a dome shape, if you have fabric with a pile on it, then it flattens out the pile as you're sewing. So you can see where you're going. We also have a quarter inch foot that has a guide on the side of it. So it's, it's perfect for um, not just um, quarter inch stitching as in patchwork, but for top stitching. So if you're top stitching a curved flap on a bag, for instance, you can use the guide on the side as you're sewing around the top and it helps you sew in a straight line. We have a blind hem foot, so you can do invisible hemming on a tire or on curtains. You have a button placement foot, so you can sew buttons on with that. This is a satin stitch foot, not finished yet. A satin stitch foot, which is clear and open toed. A satin stitch foot has two bars on the bottom, which raises the foot away from the satin stitches. And satin stitches, if you weren't aware, are ones like the scallop stitch that I showed you previously. There's a lot of stitches going on. Um, so it, it raises the foot away from the stitches so it doesn't squash them as you're sewing. I don't know why it's called a satin stitch, uh, unless, uh, Originally it was used to edge satin, which tends to fray a lot. Um, but a satin stitch can be a zigzag stitch in a straight line or any of the decorative stitches that look like that. I haven't finished yet. This one is an over edge foot. So the two bars in the centre help to keep your fabric flat as you're sewing. And the little bar on the side here tucks in any loose edges, uh, sorry, any loose fraying edges on woven fabrics. And then we have a rolled hem foot. So that will enable you to make a hem on fine or sheer fabrics um, or even cottons of a millimetre, folded over twice. There's no way you could do that without the right foot. Don't know why we... Oh, that's, um, that's another satin stitch, but it's got a closed toe. And it's got the mark in the centre, which is really useful if you're satin stitching or you're sewing over a seam um, or you've got a specific line that you need to sew over. So that's, that's a guide. And... 
come here. You've got a zipper foot. You won't expect to find a zipper foot. We have a seam lifter. So if you're saying over very thick fabrics, for instance, the seam on the side of a pair of jeans, you push this underneath your seam and it helps the, um, the foot to glide over the top so you don't get skip stitches. But you can also use this to, to make a shank as you're sewing buttons on. So you'll put the bun over the top and then sew through the center um, and it, it makes the button a little bit loose. The stitches will be loose when you go around it. And then you, you tie your thread around to give it a shank. Look. That's the first tray. <gasps> then you get more. So just when you've finished off your strawberry creams, you find you've got more underneath there. Um, there's a couple of different plates here. You've got a straight stitch plate. This is the one that I like. HP, high performance. There is a high performance foot as well though to use in conjunction. And I shall put both of these on later on if we get time on, just show you. When you, there's only one hole in here and there's only one gap in there, so only to be used on the straight stitches. When you put the plate into the machine, the machine recognises that it's got the high performance plate, it will ask you to put the right foot on and then it will prevent you from using any stitches that aren't appropriate. So you can only use straight stitches if you choose a decorative stitch, the needle would break on the plate. But you can't, the machine knows, it's, it's, it's an eye machine, it's intelligent and it knows, so it won't let you do that. So those two go together. This will take your stitch speed up to 1300 stitches a minute. On average, domestic sewing machines are around about 650 stitches a minute. We have a sewing machine, I think it's the 570 um, Elna, which is 750, no, 700 stitches a minute. An overlocker on average will be between 1100 and 1300 stitches a minute and those are very fast machines. This is as quick as the fastest overlocker machine that I've used and I love that. It's one of the reasons why I bought it. You know, if you're not necessarily sewing in a straight line really quickly, but if you're free motion embroidering, I just think it's really nice to be able to move around quickly and have the machine keep up with you. However, don't be fearful of that. You don't have to sew at speed. You have a speed control. Even if you're not very confident in, in kind of using the foot pedal to, to get the perfect speed, there's a speed, uh, a speed control on the front of the machine which will regulate the speed on the foot pedal, but you can also take the foot pedal out and just use the start-stop button so you don't need a foot pedal for it. Oh, the rest of the bits and bobs in here are screwdrivers. Uh, you can use cones with the machine if you prefer to buy your thread in bulk. You've got your cone holders and your nets to enable your fabric to go smoother, sorry, your thread to go smoother um, over your, um, over your, well, off the spool. And you've got a bobbin holder there as well. And then you've got a box of bobbins. Look at that! Honestly, for £1,399. Right, if you're... If you haven't shopped around for sewing machines before um, and you look at that price, you'll think, that machine. have a look around. Um, you, won't be able, you won't find this machine anywhere else. You, you won't find my Janome anywhere else because um, it's not made anymore. Um, but I did pay over £1,500 for my machine and that was a couple of years ago. But Google sewing machines of this kind of price and I think you'd be surprised what you don't come up with. When you, when you see all of the features that this machine's got, it really does justify the price. I, 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 honestly, I love everything about this. So if you're a serious sewer, I would love it. I, would, I, can't, I can't justify a new machine. I would love it. I've only had mine for a couple of years and it's, it's amazing. I love it. Um, this has got more features than mine, but I spent a lot of money on my machine. So may have to wait. May wait till the next one comes out. Oh, imagine what they're going to do now. Apparently, I've not seen them, but in America, you can buy machines with cameras on the front. So instead of, <laughs> I don't know why, but <laughs> instead of looking at the needle, you look at a screen. But yeah, they'll be making tea before long. Can you imagine, a little tea's made on top of it. It's, it's, I'm sure it's doable. So those are all of your feet. Again, if you want anything demonstrating, Go on to Facebook, Satin Stitch Oh, 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 I love a little bit of information like this, Judith. Uh, Judith Jones says, Satin Stitch derives from the similarity to appearance of satin fabric, especially if using Merseyside thread. I didn't know that. Love a bit of nonsense. You've been doing your research, Judith. Thank you. Right, all those back in there. If you'd like to send us some nonsense, Go to the Facebook page, visitor posts, 
<laughs> I like the history of things, is that the history of some things, like the tomato pincushions. They, it, it's, it's really, uh, so many pincushions are made in the shape of a tomato. Um, and the reason being, when uh, back in medieval days, tomatoes were believed to keep evil spirits away from the home, and they were traditionally given as a wedding gift. So after the couple got married, they'd have their tomato and they would sit it on the doorstep to ward away evil spirits. But tomatoes were really expensive, so people started making them out of fabric. So initially, the fabric tomato was given to the happy couple to ward away evil spirits, but they happen to be really useful as pincushions. And it's, I don't know, it's carried on for hundreds of years. And I, I love nonsense like that. So if you've got any more, come and let me know. Okay, let's have a look at this machine. So I'll give you a whole tour of the machine and then we'll get into some demos. You've got extra high spool holders um, with a guide. So this is so that you can use um, your, your big cones if you wanted to. Two spool holders means that you can wind your bobbin up. So I told you it was heavy. See those muscles there? Ooh. You can wind your bobbin up at the same time as you're sewing. So the bobbin winder has a completely separate motor to the needle. So as soon as you flick this over, you've got a button to press here to wind the bobbin and you can carry on sewing. That was something that was developed in wartime to make the most of machinist time. They didn't have to wait for those few seconds it takes to wind a bobbin. They could carry on sewing while that was winding. So that, that's a nice little tip. Um, down here is your stitch, stitch selection board. All of the stitches are on a board at the back of the machine and they're all numbered and there are modes as well. Um, so mode one is your utility stitches, mode two are the majority of the decorative stitches and some of the buttonholes and over edge and those type of things. And then these are your straight stitches, these are your high performance stitches. So when you put that plate on that I showed you earlier on, those are the only stitches that you can select. And as we flip that around, we have the alphabet in uppercase, in lowercase, and in two different fonts as well. And again, those are all numbered. So when you have a look at some of those stitches, I think when you see the stitches and the feet on a sewing machine, you understand what the machine has been designed to do. Um, so your straight stitches, triple straight stitch, stretch fabric. So we're talking garments, we're talking baby clothes. Then we've got zigzag stitch and a lightning zigzag, zigzag stitch, which is again great for um, stretch fabrics. We can sew elastic in, so we're still talking clothing. Uh, we're talking garments. You can over edge stitch. So if you're making something to sell, um, you can use any one of these stitches to finish off the seams, to give the look of an overlocker and a professional finish. That could be anything from a cushion cover to a t-shirt, um, to a dress, anything that you make, and pair of curtains. We have blind hem stitches, so now you're talking about curtains, you're talking about clothing. Whole range of different sizes of buttonholes um, and different shapes of buttonholes for garments, maybe for threading ribbon through as a decorative effect on the back of a cushion cover. Um, heirloom stitches, so ladder stitches, so you can do drawn work. These are great quilting stitches or stitches for stitching in the ditch, as in stitching over an existing seam, or smocking stitches. You can gather your fabric and use these stitches to give a smocked look. They won't stretch, but it'll look like smocking. Decorative stitches, these are great for applique. Um, different sizes of the blanket stitch and, and um, pin, a pin stitch. Um, moving across again, great for applique, all of those. Um, we've got an eyelet and more mending stitches so you can darn, you can sew a button on with the machine. Um, this is for knit fabrics, this is for stretch fabrics. More stitches that look like smocking or you can use those decoratively. All these are decorative stitches, remember you can join them all together. Then we've got quarter of an inch seam stitches so the needle moves across to the right hand side. This is a nice decorative stitch, I have demonstrated that before, it looks like a hand sewn saddle stitch. And you can um, lock stitch with the machine. Machine. Do decorative, 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 stitch in the ditch, faggoting. You can join pieces of fabric together with these stitches. Um, you could be decorating garments, it could be little girls' dresses, little boys' shirts, um, pajamas, tablecloths, satin stitch around the edge of a napkin, um, more of the straight stitches, tacking stitches, triple stitches. Oh gosh, and then I love these decorative stitches. Um, they're very delicate. When you stitch them out, they look as though they've been drawn with a fine ballpoint pen. Oh, these, these are the words. So we've got handmade, stitch, love and sweet. So you just choose 198 and it stitches out the whole, the whole number. 
We've got shoes and hearts and mannequins and scissors. There are so many little boats and trains. You can choose these individually and join them all together. Then with your straight stitch needle plate, that's included. These are the stitches that you can choose and that's it. You're restricted from sewing anything else. And this is your extra quick professional grade high performance needle plate. And then you've got the alphabet on the other side, but I shan't take you through all of those. I think we know all, all 26 of those. Hmm. Um, ride your foot pedal. I'll come like this and don't worry about not being able to find the lead. It's inside here. So that's nice and neat and it's an extra wide foot pedal to help prevent your foot slipping off it as you're sewing. Remember you don't, come on, you don't need the foot pedal. You've got a speed control on the front but that goes out the window there and then that goes back in there. And it's got, oh in you go, it's got grippy bits on the bottom as well, go that way. Again to help prevent your foot pedal from slipping so that goes in the side. There's a lot to talk about this machine before we even get to demonstrating anything, but I'll be with you as soon as I can with a demo. Let me just plug that in. Right, then, so that's how you choose your stitches. We've also got a memory button and a cancel button. So if you're going to join stitches together, you choose one stitch, press memory, the machine remembers it. That's how easy it is. As you come on up, uh, you've got a lock button. So if you have young children in the house and you're leaving your machine on your own for any length of time, then do the lock button and you won't be able to sew with it. Um, you can adjust the length and the width. This is from skipping from one stitch to another. You can choose to file some of your monogram stitches if you wish. Oh, this is your bobbin winder. This is the button where you can extend um, the stitch like I showed you with the scallop stitch earlier on. You can mirror image. You can choose a twin needle. Now that's important because this is another button that will restrict you from using um, a stitch that isn't appropriate for a twin needle. So a twin needle will swing from side to side and some of the stitches will swing that across too far and it'll break on the foot pedal. So it stops you choosing those. We have the screen on the front here and on that screen you will be able to see your stitch, your stitch length, your stitch width and if I just change up a little bit, everything changes, the tension will change, the foot will change if it needs to and you can change the look of the screen by pressing the button at the side and then you can adjust the length and the width of certain stitches, not all of them, by pressing buttons. All of this in the manual, so don't, don't have to take too much notice of me now. Um, this is your speed control and your start-stop button. So if you take the foot pedal out, you can use the start-stop. So, so you can sew at any height that you like or if your legs don't work very well, you're gonna find that really easy. We have a thread cutter, a needle up down position, a lock stitch button, a reversing button. The tension's on the front here and that's to help to keep the machine clean um, because if any lint builds up inside the machine, it's probably going to be around the tension disc. And I'm, I, I learned to sew on an old Singer sewing machine that had the tension on the front. It's, um, it's more of an industrial kind of thing, I think that. We have a presser foot pressure dial on the front. So increase the pressure for high, uh, for fine fabrics, decrease it for thick fabrics. You have a needle threader. It's got the plate on the bottom, which is interchangeable. You can drop the feed dogs on the machine. And I think we should get sewing. That's half an hour, and I haven't really shown you all of the features of the machine in that time, but we have seen the machine before, so take a look on YouTube. Um, oh, Debbie, buy Kimberly the machine just to justify the purchase. Do you know she's probably watching at home? In fact, Kim, have you got a different account under the name of Christine Tong? Caught you. I, I wish I could. But she uses my machine and she absolutely loves it. In fact, I think I've spoiled her rotten with my machine. Kim and her daughter have moved in with us for the time being. They came about a month ago before everything kicked off. Um, so she's been, din din she's been doing a lot of sewing. When she gets back home again, she won't have a machine like this. And I think she's going to find hers really slow. So, do you know, Christine, it's, I, I wouldn't be surprised if I'm, if I'm buying another sewing machine at some point. Kids, huh? Maybe for Christmas. Okay, let me show you some of the stitches first of all and how you choose them. So when you're having a practice with the, uh, with the sewing machine, and do, particularly with the decorative stitches, um, 
because they always look a little bit different to the diagrams on the front. So have a play with them and see, see what they look like. For instance, with the bobbin and the shoe, they turned out to be a lot bigger than I expected them to be. Um, so just, just have a play with them first of all. Um, if it's for a particular project, practice on the same fabric that you're using and practice on two pieces of fabric. It's rarely that you just put one under a sewing machine. So let's go for one of the decoratives. Um, the decorative stitches are in mode two. So go back to the, this clips in the, in the back of the machine. So it's there in front of you. Um, we've got mode one, which are utility. And then these are all mode two. And I'm going to stitch out that mannequin, which is number 194 down here. So to choose your mode, there's a mode button, which is useful. Um, so press mode. It'll default to mode one when you first get the machine home. I'm now on mode two and it says so up here. So if I choose 194, there's my stitch. That's what it looks like. There's the stitch length. There's the stitch width. Let's see if we can override that. Oh, no, I'm going up and down the stitches. What have I done there? Where's my mannequin gone? There we go. You can adjust them here. If you can't, you get a chirping noise. Sounds like you've got a budgie in the machine. But that's just saying, no, I'm not doing that. I can't do that one. But I've not adjusted these before. Let's see what happens when we do. And then I'm going to take the foot pedal out and just use the start stop button here. And it'll carry on sewing until I decide to stop. So I'm only guiding the fabric through. You'll find with the decorative stitches, the fabric jumps backwards and forwards as the machine's sewing. So don't push your fabric underneath or pull it because you'll spoil the design of your fabric, uh, of your stitch. So when you're finished, you can press stop and snip. And then when you take your work out, oh look, oh, is it stopped there? I wanted it to stop at the end, not, not halfway down. So what I'm going to do is just do one stitch and I'm going to do it this way. So I've got, let's go back to the beginning, to 194. So that's reset back to how it was originally. And then I'm going to press the lock button and then press start. And then it'll stop. So I haven't pressed stop, it stopped all by itself. I can snip and then I get one. Now I think I'm right in saying, apologies if I'm going to get this wrong, but if I press start again and I do a few stitches, so it's not automatically going to stop at the end, but I think if I press the lock button halfway through sewing, it'll stop at the end of the one that it's actually sewing. There you go. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's quite an interactive machine, isn't it? It's, um, it listens to what you're doing. Just as it's told, it's a, it's a machine that behaves itself. So I do have to give mine a talking to every now and again, I have to say. For no particular reason, it just makes me feel in control. Um, so let's join some of these together. So. Let's go for a, let's do a shoe, 196, and I want to remember this, I'll press M. And up here, I've got a picture of the shoe, and I've got a little cursor, so that's moved along to the next one. So let's do a shoe and a van, 184, memory. Two pictures appear up there. And then we can go to it from a van to a boat to a 187. Oh, got that wrong, cancel. 87 memory um, and from there let's do oh what should we do have we got a flower let's do a 182 and a memory oh i don't like that there let's press cancel that'll take that one off and my cursor moves again let's do a vine leaf let's do a 149 memory then let's do some alphabet so let's do an eve elner i need to go into the alphabet bit so that's mode three. So you can mix your modes up. So I need a 005 memory. There's my letter E. Let's let's give it an L. 012 memory. Give it an N. 
014, memory, let's give it an A. 001, memory. And then we are going to, let's do a space, 999, memory. So now I'm just going to get a straight stitch, which I can snip away afterwards. And then let's, let's finish there, so I can do a lock stitch, which is mode two. Oh, mode two, that's it. And I need a 202, memory, okay? And then we'll press start and we'll see what happens. Away we go. I can't even remember what I put in there now. But you can join together any of the stitches. So you can make a really nice decorative effect on um, ribbon. You could join together all of the words. So it should have a with, shouldn't it? So you could do handmade with love. But you've got handmade, you've got love, you've got sweet, and you've got stitch. You could have a whole row of transportation. So that's finished again now. I haven't, haven't done anything. So we'll snip. Oops. And just the kind of thing that you'd like to have down the placket on the front of your shirt. A shoe, a van, a boat, a vine leaf, and an Elna. <laughs> One day when we're able, you'll get your shoes on, jump in the van, have a ride on a boat, have a look at the scenery, and then you can't wait to get back to your Elna. So you can tell stories as well. I, I promised you we would take a look at um, corded buttonholes because that's something that we haven't shown you so excuse me while I reach over oh and then we were going to do easy EPP weren't we so I keep I say what I'm doing and then I, I get all forgetful so I need some cords so I'm just going to use um, an embroidery um, a crochet cord for this one I need some scissors which I haven't brought with me oh there there got those and I'm going to use a little bit of stabiliser behind my fabric. So good job we haven't got a big studio, you know. I'll be running around all over the place trying to find stuff. I'll use some of that later on as well. So I'm going to use stabiliser behind this. <clears throat> I would do that. Um, whenever I'm using a satin stitch, if I've got fine fabric or a loose weave fabric, and certainly for buttonholes, because the stitch goes over and over in the same spot or very close to itself so much that you can distort the fabric and therefore the stitch. So I'd normally have a bit of spray on that to hold it in place, but we'll, we'll, be, we'll be fine. So, um, shall I show you over here how we're going to... Look how messy! It's like, it's like being at home. Actually, I'm very tidy at home. I don't, I don't like mess. Okay, so we'll do that in a minute as well. No, just don't look down here. <laughs> so, <laughs> Vicky's coming back tomorrow and I have already asked the director to apologise to her for the mess down here. We've got one of, we've got a, we've got a really cheap carpet in here. And it's one of those nylon-y type of things that you, you can't pick the threads of it. They're kind of not into the, into the fibres. So the whole place just looks like I've been shaving fabric all over the place. So Vicky, if you're watching, I've tried to tidy up as best I can. Then I decided I had a life, so I've left you the mess. OK. So this is your buttonhole foot. Um, there is a spare plate that comes with it which is this one. So if you're sewing through thick fabrics, you clip those two together and then your, oops, your thick fabric sits in between here, so in between the two layers, and that helps to stabilise it. But we don't need it for this one. So there are different types of buttonholes that you can use. Have a look at those. So these are all on your sheet. Personal preference, really. Number 23 will be the one that you use most of all. Number 24 is a smaller version. So if I'm doing um, maybe a blouse, I'd use either of those, or um, buttonholes on cushion covers and things like that. You've got your rounded um, buttonhole and one that's rounded at each end. Again, you, you can use whichever of those that you like. These are generally for thicker fabrics where you have a shank on the button. So if you're making a buttonhole on a coat, um, the shank actually sits in the edge here. So be aware of that when you're, when you're choosing which stitch to use, because on a stitch like this, 
your button would sit in the middle. On a stitch like this, your button's going to sit on the end. And then over here, you've got a stretch buttonhole stitch and a buttonhole stitch for knitwear. But there's no reason why you can't use that as a decorative stitch as well. So I'm just going to do the, I'll just do the regular one. So your button is going to sit in the back here. So that pops in there and that measures the size of your button. Shan't use that for this instance. But if you're making a corded button, that puts a cord underneath the stitch that you're going to make and that makes it strong. So again, if you are making buttonholes on coats and things like that, then it may be an idea to do this to make it last longer. So just take your cord, that is a very long piece of cord. So we're going to wrap this around, there's a little prong shape on the ends. You may have these on your buttonhole foots at home already and just wondered what on earth it's for. So I'm going to loop this around the centre part, like so. And then we'll take it down the back, hold it in place, the little grooves on the back of this that are going to hold it in place as well. Up over the back, and then, oh, I've got that twisted. It's a bit fiddly. Over the back of there, and then through the middle of the groove on the back. This is actually in the instructions as well. Snip that off and we'll just tie that in a little knot to hold it in place. Just a single knot so I can remove that afterwards. In you go. There you go. So there are lots of hints and tips in the manual as well, how to put a zip in and things like that. There's a whole load of trouble. Go on in. There's a whole load of troubleshooting as well. So that, so that's now nice and tight. So let's take this over to the machine. And it's a snap-on foot. So there's a little button at the back that you press and the foot drops off, like on most modern sewing machines. And this one drops back on again. Go on. I told you I talked to my machine, but it's never, never nice words. If I go down and up with a needle, and then just get my screwdriver. There should have been a quick unpick in here as well. You did get one of those. But I'll just use a screwdriver for now to just take the thread to the back and out of the way. Okay, are we ready? So this goes underneath here. Um, my stitch number, bear with me, was mode two, which I'm in now. And I'm going to do stitch 023, which is a standard size. Did I press the two there? No, I didn't. 023. Why are you going down? Now I'm in mode three, that's why. Mode three, mode one, mode two. Then I need 023. And that's a bit more like it. What I also need to do is to pull down the bar at the side, and that's going to measure the size of the buttonhole. So that needs to sit in between the two guides. That's a sensor that'll help turn the machine around when it gets to the right position. OK, let's get going. So it's now sewing a straight stitch along the side of the cord. The cord needs to be nice and tight. And then it zigzags over the top of the cord. So straight stitch going back, that's going to make the stitch even stronger. Bar tack at the end. And then zigzag stitch forward again. And when it gets to the end again, it will automatically stop. So I haven't done anything there at all. Slip that. And let's just pull that out. Oh, you didn't snip your bevel. It's left you right up. Snip! It will come out. That's because the cord's still in here, isn't it, you silly devil? OK, now it'll come out. <laughs> Use error. So we're left with this. That's why you don't tie a double knot at the back of your foot. Um, so I've got a loop at the front end where it went through the hook, and I've got two long prongs here. So I'm simply going to pull those through until the loop disappears. And then I can trim these long threads off at this end. Could tie those if you wanted to, but they're not going to come undone. That could have been a little bit closer. So don't go through the buttonhole stitches, but you can trim that right back. So now I've got a really strong buttonhole. Um, you just cut down the centre. Let's do that while we're here as well. 
obviously I've got stabilizers on the back of this. So you can use your quick and pick, or a tiny pair of scissors would work well. Or you can use a huge pair of dressmaking shears if you don't have any small ones to hand. So there's your buttonhole. And again, that's really strong. So maybe on a, on a wool coat, a buttonhole that's going to be used a lot on tough fabrics, thicker fabrics. The frayed edges on the inside, if you use a little bit of fray stop, which is like a, a glue for fabric, will make those tuck away nice and neatly. But that's, that's a really nice, really nice strong buttonhole. So if you've got one of those types of buttonhole feet and you've ever wondered what the hooks are for, that's that. I don't think we're going to have time to do the free motion, are we? Because I wanted to show you how quick this machine is too. These hours just go so quickly. I should request another... Oh, no, 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 EPP. Easy EPP. I have so much in my mind that I want to show you. And with a machine like this, the hour just goes so quickly, it's ridiculous. Sarah's messaged. Oh, on Instagram. Hi, Sarah, on Instagram. Oh, she's in the sun, in the garden, on this beautiful day. And she's watching on her phone. Happy Easter. She says, technology is a wonderful thing. I can't agree more. Particularly in this day and age where we can't go very far. It's still, still nice to be able to watch and keep in touch wherever you are. Um, that way. I can, I can remember um, watching tennis in the garden outside. Do you move your TV outside? Extension table, out you go. All of that trouble to get your TV outside and then you can't see a thing because it's sunny. So I'm just winding up the bobbin. Again, this can be done at the same time as you're sewing if you're short on time. I've wound up the bobbin right underneath the bobbin, so that wasn't very clever at all. So that'll happen at some point, I'm sure. So we just start again. Do I hate wasting thread? When I, I studied um, dressmaking at the London College of Fashion quite a few years ago now, and um, obviously the machines are used over and over again. And every time a new class went into the room, um, the tutor would say, OK, let's um, take all the thread out and start all over again. And the thread that we used to throw away Oh gosh, my mum would be, oh, beside herself, all that kind of wastage. Even though it's only thread, you know. This winds up really quickly. You can adjust the speed in the settings of these as well. Um, you can even slow down the rate at which you, um, the thread goes onto the bobbin, which is amazing. Nikki's messaged in. Hi, Nikki. Oh, loving the Elna, she says it's a fabulous machine. Thank you. She needs to start saving. The nice thing is with this machine, well, there's lots of nice things about this machine. Um, probably going to be the last one you ever need to buy. I thought that with my machine before I saw this one, but in a... Oh, I've gone the wrong way with that. So the needle thread is better than mine as well. Um, so with the needle thread, you're going to pull the thread across to one side. You go up through the needle thread, snip that off at the side. That comes down. That gets stuck in a knot. Off you go. Up you go. Go, 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 go. And then there's a loop at the back to thread it. So that's that. And it's just come undone again. Excuse my back. <laughs> While I do this, do this so I can see what I'm doing. And there we go. That's that. And I'll put the standard foot back on here as well. There we go. Now then, I have already um, covered a few of the hexagons with um, fabric. So this is from the panel that was on in the previous show. And I'm going to use my early bird and some tearaway stabiliser. We've still got a few early birds left, by the way, but not very many. So let's do that here, yep. I'll move that there, just for a second, so I can show you what I'm doing. So this is English paper piecing, but some of you may not want or have the patience to actually sit and sew by hand, but you love the look of it. So I've already covered the pieces and glued those in place with my fabric glue stick. And then I'm going to stick them down onto some tearaway stabiliser, like so. And a generous dollop. There we go. But I've got, I've got six refills, so I, I can be generous with these. 
So a do dollop around there. And make sure you line these up really well. And then one here with no gaps, like so. I don't really need to demonstrate this now, do I? I think you've got the idea. And let's have a navy one. So, let's do another navy one there. Like so. so they need to be sitting nice and snugly together as if you'd hand sewn them. I'm going to have a practice with my stitches first. So I'll, I'll actually practice on, on the side here. I've nearly used all of that. So one, two, and I'm going to choose a very small zigzag stitch. So I'll just leave that for a second to make it stick. And zigzag stitch so heavy. Um, is in mode one, we need stitch five. So three, one, five. Oh, no, you have to put the zero in. Oh, no, you don't. Um, yep, that's fine. So I'm going to alter the length and the width of this one. Where are you going? to let's try we'll try a length of tw 0.2 and a really narrow width so I'm going to do the same 0.2 and let's just see what happens so let's put this under the machine the satin stitch that comes on the machine has got a groove down the center so I should be able to follow the line and let's I've got my foot on the foot pedal and it's not plugged in so let's slow this down and See what happens, and we got a we got a bit of a knot there. No, you're okay. You're okay. Let me try my fabric again. Maybe it doesn't like the staple. Everything's going everywhere. Got my foot on the foot pedal again. Three dogs are okay, they're down there, they're down there. Maybe my stitch is just too short. <laughs> Let's turn it up a bit. Do my foot pedal again. Oh, that's it, right. So let me slow that down and I can actually adjust the width and the length while I'm here. Right, I think that's okay. But my needle's come and done. Oh, come on. I've only got three minutes left. Three minutes left and I can't throw the machine quick enough. So what I'm going to do <laughs> um, is do that very fine zigzag stitch in a neutral coloured thread over the edges of the paper pieces. So if the stitch is tiny enough, you shouldn't be able to see it. And a neutral coloured thread is going to be the best colour. If you've got um, a specific colour fabric that you're using, you know, if you've got pink, then use a pink thread. Um, but if you've got lots... Oh, what are you doing? If you've got lots of different colours, then a neutral thread will be the most invisible one. Oh, this is a race against time. I've got two minutes left. And I'm using the foot pedal that's not plugged in. And we've come undone again. All right. I tell you what, while I'm rethreading and rethreading and rethreading, have a look what's coming up tomorrow. Uh, remember, we've got Vicky coming back tomorrow, so we're pleased to hear. And she will have the Liberty Winterbourne collection at eight o'clock in the morning. She's got books and workroom tools at, um, at nine o'clock and then at ten o'clock she's got the Elna 680 and the 570. So if you are in the market for a new sewing machine but this one is a little bit out of your reach then those two are a lot more affordable sewing machines. Obviously not as many features you get what you pay for um, but very nice machines nonetheless.
So join Vicky live tomorrow at eight o'clock in the morning. Still threading. <laughs> With one minute remaining. I've never done that before, isn't that silly? Um, we have basically an amazing sewing machine with a very easy threading system that has a mind of its own has just decided that it's going to go on strike at the end of the show and not let me demonstrate what I wanted to. Never has that happened before. Right, EPP's on the floor, we're going to do it anyway. If you knot up now, I should be so cross. You devil. Um, OK. <laughs> what I was going to do was a tiny stitch in between those two. I shall endeavour to demonstrate that next time we bring you the machine. Meanwhile, you've got Vix for the next three days, and I shall see you again if you've still got a job on Thursday.